Old Man Orange Podcast. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. And I'm Ryan Dunnigan. Have you been blasting that bat soundtrack of the Lego Batman movie? Oh my god, that that like song from the very beginning of Lego Batman. Spoilers ahead, folks. That song at the beginning of Lego Batman, when Batman first comes in, that is on my workout playlist. That, that song is so badass. I had to like send it to people. It's like, hey, you might not have seen this Lego Batman movie, but you like this Lego Batman metal song. Well, the thing about that whole thing is, don't get me wrong, um, we'll go into better detail about that movie. And there's a part near the end where they started bringing in other stuff. And I was kind of like, at my, my initial response, my initial gut reaction was like, oh, I wish it was just more DC or more Batman. But then I kind of thought back, like, you know what? I probably got more Batman villains and more Batman action in the first 15 minutes of this movie than I have in any other theatrical Batman movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were talking about the song at the end. I'm like, I'm like what part of the end of the song? The part where you just start repeating how cool he is? Well, yeah, well, I mean, I've, I've listened to that song so many times on Spotify since well, I saw it. Well, it's funny, that. too, because I'd be, like, driving down the road, and, you know, you, you, you can, like, blare most of that soundtrack. But then there's, like, the only time that it gets fucking weird is there's that song where, like, the little, like, British kids sing it. <laughs> and that just sounds... It's almost like that, like, you reach over real quick and turn the volume down. Like, okay, can't have that one. Just go. Well, I didn't even... I, I knew... I sat through the... Tr- I, I sat through the credits, kind of waiting to see if there was, like, some, like, post-credit thing, which there wasn't. But I sat through the credits, and I remember... I don't know what you're talking about, but the only one I actually got in my way and listened to on Spotify is just that, who... Like, who has the coolest gadgets? Batman! You know, Batman. it's just, it really sounds, what's funny about it, because it sounds... Who's got the biggest dick? Batman! Batman. It sounds almost like if you had, like, a, it almost, that, that whole soundtrack almost sounds kind of, oh, that song in particular, sounds like, well, first off, he's just gloating the whole time. It's just Batman singing about how awesome he is. It's a song about him, about how awesome he is. And then it's also... him singing it and playing guitar. And then on top of that... It sounds sort of like all the reasons like a 12 year old likes Batman, <laughs> but then you actually think about like, oh yeah, I really do like the song a lot. <laughs> I guess it's, it's all the same just... reasons why you like Batman. Yeah. It's sad because it sounds like he has the coolest gadgets. He has a cool car. He does awesome backflips. He's got buns of steel. <laughs> Well, it's also just, it's one of those things. Cause like I knew a little, first off, let me say about that movie. That movie has like so many nods, big and small, of all Batman stuff in it. And I knew Batman was going to come in because they have that part. There's we're going to talk as if you already seen the movie, folks. Uh, there's the part basically where they lower him down. Joker has <laughs> just as my I knew Batman was going to come in. You know his name was in the title at some point. Well, was like, I knew that was him dressed as the mayor. I knew that was him dressed as the mayor. I'm not sure if it was meant to be kind of an homage to um, Dark Knight Returns. But that's kind of how I viewed that. The second I saw like the mayor, I'm like, oh, it's going to be like Dark Knight Returns where he's dressed like the crazy homeless lady in the liquor store or whatever. But um, when he comes in and then he says like, let's get nuts. And there's like the let's get nuts playlist. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> that, 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 that part was so cool. Just those little like throwbacks. So it's like, hey, you like Batman 66. You like Batman 89. Like we got them all there for you. Well, let's not get that. That's that's funny about that is because that's not even a. Batman, that, like that's something that movie was criticized for, because that's like it's kind of funny how something get criticized, because that is such not a Batman line or Bruce Wayne line, but then like it's it's a Michael Keaton line. Well, it's like I feel like that's one of those things. Like that that movie got so that that part at least got so much shit because people like Batman wouldn't say that, Bruce Wayne wouldn't say that, but it's so like ingrained in people's minds that now it's just kind of like oh you know what that's kind of cool. It's too, well because now it's classic. That's the thing is over time it becomes that sort of thing. You know, it's the same thing that, you know, you could say, like, the shark um, bat repellent. Like, that, for the longest time, was always considered, like, oh, she had to go there with the shark bat repellent, blah, blah, blah. But now that's been, like, around for so long that it's like, no, that's fucking classic. Like, you don't fucking mess with that. That's, like, that's a, that's a real, you know, old joke there that still holds up. Yeah, and I knew somehow that was going to come back around. But um second I saw Jaws, I was like, yeah, that's coming back around. But there's that part where he's all like, let's get nuts. And then all of a sudden he just dives at the screen. It has that build up and it has like a slow zoom in. Like, and then all of a sudden he actually, it's not him actually singing. It's a pre recorded um, track he made, but there are moments he's singing along to it because he's just getting so amped up in the moment. And I'll say this like, you can, com- other people can complain about whatever they want about the movie. The first 10 minutes of this movie, which that's not where, that's not where the goodness stops. 
the first 10 minutes of this movie is probably the most Batman action with as many villains as possible on screen, more than anything Batman probably made. Yeah, it probably will be for such a long time. It literally starts off in like, okay, you take away the Lego-ness and maybe like a little bit of the comedy. The way this movie starts off, though, it's like, that's how I all always wanted i don't care what superhero movie it is that's like i've always wanted one to start off like that where it's like oh fuck he's got a battle like them all right here and there you know what i mean we're going fucking extreme we're going balls out in this film and nobody's ever done that except for the lego batman one yeah and i think they're the reason why they're willing to be more like like try, try i think like with animation in some ways they're willing to be kind of a little bit more te- like uh experimental with animation other ways i feel like they're going to be kind of um I think I think they'll be like more experimental with the animation. The context, like okay, let's throw all the fanboy shit out there. But when it comes to actually like uh, like probably like you know rating, I think they're still gonna make it more like PG G rate. I think it's the one area they're not gonna get experimental with the animation. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Well, it's not in this type. You know, we got Justice League Dark for those kind of moments, but. For yeah, for the Le- well, I don't, I don't expect that. Like in Lego, I kind of expect it to be a fun PG. But like what Same makes here. it it's yeah. just like just like the other Lego movie, you know, the jokes that they have in there. They're that kind of like double wham where like both a kid and adult can laugh at it, but for completely different reasons. And I think that's just such a cool thing anyway. Well, there is blatant adult jokes in this movie that has no problem hiding that's an adult joke. Like, it's, like Even a kid would get it. Like there's the part when when he meets uh, Rich, Dick Grayson for the first time. She's like, hello, my name is Richard Grayson, but kids school call me Dick. Yeah, kids be kind of cruel that way. <laughs> I love that line. <laughs> It's just like the small, because this was one of those movies, though, like, I, about halfway through the movie, I got, like, tuckered out from laughing. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, God. Oh, man, I almost feel like I gotta take a nap now. Can we, like, pause the movie and come back for, like, a bit? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm like, I don't know if I can keep up. Yeah, I I feel... <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, man, I haven't had an energy drink in, like, three months, but boy, could I really use one right now. Uh, plus, I went to a late showing. I went to, like, the 9.15 showing, so... Well, the thing about it, then, like, is the movie happens, because even if you look at the crowd, like, to clarify what I said earlier, like, I think they're willing to be, like, all right, it's Batman, we got all this franchising, you know what, let's throw a bunch of villains in there, let's make it a big, giant, like, you know, just fan fest. I think that's where they're willing to be, and kind of, like, be experimental, and just kind of do things they wouldn't do in any other movie, where it's kind of, like, I still think we're a little while off from a theatrical, like, R-rated or theatrical PG-13 animated movie happening again, but, um, even though Sausage yeah, Party, in theaters, yeah. Um, but this one right here, holy Christ. Um, I'm going to say it right now. I need to see it again. I don't know if it's, it's not the best theatrical Batman movie, but it's definitely somewhere in the top five. That's for sure. Oh yeah. I, I would definitely say, I can almost even, I've only seen it once too. So I'm not going to say a hundred percent, but I can even say top three. I, I kind of feel the same way too. Um, cause I don't, I, I still actually like dark Knight and Batman begins more than this, but it's still, I probably like those two more. And then the only thing is Batman, like 89, my like, might like in a classic way, maybe just a little bit more, but it's, you know, it's almost kind of hard to judge the, because you know, Lego Batman movies kind of doing something completely different. I mean, you're not doing, you know, it's a fun Batman movie instead of being more of, you know, a serious or even, I don't know, it's, it's hard to, like, compare which ones. Like, Dark Knight and Lego Batman, which one? That just sounds like such a weird way of, like, pulling two kind of, like, polar different movies that have the same well, character. it's definitely the best Batman movie since Dark Knight. I think we could all agree on that one. At least theatrical movie. Yeah. The whole thing with it, because the very, if, even if you look into the crowd of all the different characters, there are so many deep cut characters. Like, okay, they made a joke about the lame, like, 50s and 60s characters that disappeared off the map. But then if you look, you'll see, I forget his name, but there's the villain from Batman Beyond, the guy who's like basically the other Lex Luthor. He has like green see-through skin. You see his, his skeleton, it's black. He's You see him in the background mm-hmm. a couple times. You see the mutant leader from Dark Knight Returns in there. You see all kinds, of like, you know, King Tut from the uh, 66 show. So, and then even yep. when they go to the Justice League party, you even see like Apache Chief, Eastern Wind, the yeah, Wonder Twins. So happy, like, oh my god, Apache Chief is back. And fuck, even though he doesn't have a goddamn line, he's back. I was surprised <laughs> to see him because even in Justice League Unlimited, they had the characters that were meant to be them, but they even changed their names. They were, he was like Long Shadow. Yeah, they got well, and that might have been like one of those weird, maybe at that time period when they were doing that. Because I don't, well, yeah, as I say, was Hanna Barbera owned by Warner Brothers at that time? At that point, maybe not. Maybe yay. Who knows? Um, I think there's still 
Because nowadays they're all owned together, so I don't think it'd be a big deal anymore. But that time period, it might have been. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there's that whole part where um, I'll say after because, like, you know, if, if you've been listening to the show recently, folks, you don't know really a lot about what we do there. It's I've been on hiatus for like two years. We're going to get back on it eventually. But we have this show called Drunk Batman. We used to do it started off as live action. Then we became animation as it went on. Um and it's basically about Batman as an alcoholic being a wash up. This one, he's by no means a wash up, but everybody in the Justice League fucking hates him as they do in our thing. And there's the whole thing. Oh, shit. Who invited him? <laughs> you know, there's the they took some drunk Batman moments here. I mean, I'm not too sure if that's the case, but out of, it's a you know, a couple hundred people working on that movie. Somebody had to see drunk Batman. I don't it's know. only got like half a million views. <laughs> Maybe I'd like to think that like because there's even a part when he goes to Gotham Central and he's emptying all his stuff. Now, just is gonna start with the weird folks. In ours, drunk. In ours, Batman's dirt poor, and he can't afford a fuck doll, so he buys an inflatable dolphin. That that that's that's his substitute. <laughs> and then when he goes to like Gotham Central and he's putting all his stuff on the table, there's an inflatable dolphin. An inflatable dolphin. There's a dolphin he drops on. Yeah. So I'm just like, um. I, I mean, I I doubt it. I'm sure it's a coincidence, but at the same time, though. I want to, you don't know. There's there's almost like too many little moments in there that I'm like, there's got to be somebody in there who might have. I don't care. Even if it's just an animator, that I'm assuming there might be somebody like in there. Like he just put it in there himself. I'm hoping. I don't know. But um, that would be so awesome if that was the case. Like, I just, I'm, for that reason alone, I mean, I was already, I was already going to get this movie on Blu ray, but that, for that reason alone, I'm getting the Blu ray and I'm going, I'm getting director's audio commentary. And I'm fast forwarding right to the point where he plops the dolphin down on the, uh, on the, on the, on the evidence table. I really hope, though, this, going back to, like, the Lego movie, I hope that the Batman Blu-ray is actually better than the Lego Blu-ray. Because the only downfall to that Lego movie is, for amazing as that movie is, I was going like, oh, man, I can't wait to see the fucking special features on the Lego movie. It's going to have all kinds of cool stuff of how they made this. And it's like, no, they got, like, the kiddie special features. They're like, hey, kids, I'm Chris Pratt. I'm a Lego. Now let's go have some fun. And it's like, oh, it's God, probably going to be kind of like that. I bet you it will be, but it'd be... It's one of those ones, like, come on, guys. It's like, you got some serious shit going on here, like, I don't, you can put the kitty special feature on there, but put one that's like, give me like the legitimate like making of. No, I get you. Um, I think the Lego brand thing is that's what they're kind of their their whole thing is like sort of a semi <laughs> like what are you in a semi like kid friendly Adult Swim type humor. Exactly, I think that is definitely the case. Well, even like I was kind of thinking of the Lego Batman movie. Like when you're watching Batman, this sounds kind of weird, but Batman's character almost feels like a slight, almost like parody of Trump. Too. And I don't know if that just kind of happened because, you know, the movie's probably been done for quite some time. So I'm like, well, it would be kind of weird if that was the case. But at the same time, you can almost see some of these things where, like, he just does it. Like, so it's, I got to do things my way. I'm the one doing it. I'm the coolest. I think it's, I, I always had the best ideas. Look, I have a whole list that says how many times I've had a badass idea. How many times somebody else Everybody had. else zero. I don't, I don't think it's meant yeah. to be a parody on Trump. I think it just happens to be. Because even before like Trump was running, this is how Batman acted in the Lego Batman in, in the Lego movie, and I think it's more of just like he's like Archer, or he's like a total man child who just like he has the money to do whatever he wants, so he's just kind of in his own little bubble. Where Batman and everything else, he's doing it for the good of the city, and this it's more like I'm a thrill seeker and I gotta save the city because who's gonna love me if I don't save the city? Yeah, no, no, I, I'm not saying it's like yeah, not even a hundred percent like that. I'm just saying like it has just a little bit of feel, and maybe that just kind of came just at the same time it just happens to be i think there's because, that line who always like it's like who never skips leg day batman who does who plays who pays his taxes not batman, not batman. <laughs> that's what i mean like there's just like a little bit of ones like that and i just kind of wonder if those kind of came in sort of it even looks at the camera smiling when he says that line not batman and he, as he flips the riddler over or even just the part it's just like such like a retarded moment but when alfred i can't remember what alfred asked batman to do and batman's like no no, no, no. And he starts just like flipping retardedly like up the stairs like, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's like a part like you, you try to like sell that to somebody else. They might be like, dude, what's wrong with you? But it's like, I don't know what it is. It's a combination of a Lego, Batman, and just like, I don't know, all at the same time. Well, just, just like, I don't know. There's some weird primal thing that kind of comes with it. Just like the, 
just the timing of just this thing flipping around. No, 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 no. Like, yeah, I don't know. There's just something that's funny about re- repetition like that. I, I, then there's even like. Well, it's kind of like, it reminds me of like Team America. Like the what what makes that movie like so funny is the fact that they're puppets, and you just it's almost like you laugh harder at like the puppets' movements more than actually even like lines. Well, there's that part in Team America where like. They're like at the very beginning, like let's make things interesting, and they just like kind of bump into each other, just running back and forth. Originally, there was gonna be some like kung fu puppet fight, but they kept on having too much trouble. It was taking too much time. Like, might be funny if they just like run into each other, just back and forth, and just play this dramatic music like a fight's happening. (laughs) Yeah, they're just like bumping into each other. (laughs) Well, like another thing about that, like, so the movie opens up, and they have this big ass like you know Joker's threatening to take over the city. And they have this big ass battle with like nearly every single Batman villain. Not every villain, but like every like major villain, a lot of like random ones. I was looking for Hush. He might be in there, but I didn't see him. And um as they're battling, like bat- like Joker gets away as well as so do the other villains, but Batman stops the bomb, and then he goes and like everyone's like, Yeah, we love you, Batman. Whoa, he's gonna go home and party. He goes home, and then there's like this five ten minute scene of him just doing nothing which is just flat out fucking <laughs> no music it's just like quiet just whatever he's doing and it was like for whatever for how like action-packed and awesome the first like five minutes of this movie is it just goes and like then it suddenly he just gets home and you realize how boring everything is like he just shows him just putting his like lobster in the microwave and just sit, sits there for two minutes waiting for it and then like <laughs> and then he sits down like in like like the bat boat area and he's like eating the lobster like on like a little jet ski yeah he's like on a bat jet ski just in a bathroom just eating it and it's from a distance see this big empty cave with all this shit he's the only one in there and it's even the, some of the small details they get i mean there's only so much you can do with a little lego figure but you can see him kind of like trying to get butter onto the lobster as he's eating it <laughs> and then he just well then i just like to see he sits there after he finishes the lobster it's like another pause and then all like just pulls out like a guitar and starts jam he just starts lightly just playing he like tunes it fixes it just plays not nothing real just kind of lightly jamming then just we've seen this part part of this in the trailer but he's sitting there in his like own giant personal movie theater with all these seats he's the only one there <laughs> he's having trouble with the settings like hdmi one two three whatever and he's like well, i think one of the funniest parts is he, the movie he picks to watch it's like jerry Maguire. <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> i don't know why that maybe it's just like it was not the movie i was expecting to appear on there. and then as he's watching it like he says like you complete me he just starts laughing <laughs> <laughs> like he's just kind of like almost like you completely ah! <laughs> like pointing and laughing like as if like oh yeah he needs somebody <laughs> i know i think that's just hilarious like that know, that that whole scene right there i think is one of the funniest things but i think there's like the build you have to have that humongous build up to reach like why that makes that part even funnier <laughs> you can't just open up like oh my god you just can't open up on that you need that like the coolest Batman action scene in a movie to lead to that next part. Oh, yeah, totally. And there's even that thing where he's just like, oh, well, I'm going to drive by the orphanage real quick. Just goes out with a merch gun, just shooting kids with, like, T-shirts. <laughs> I just look at this dude, like, donuts around these children. Like, <laughs> so unsafe stuff. And he says, like, for those who didn't get Bat merch, here's some Bat dollars. Just throws some money out and just drives away. <laughs> and I like, too, because that's, like, sort of when I, I think that's when they introduced the Robin character. They used sort of a Dick Grayson... Well, they use Dick Grayson, but they kind of, like, mix-match him, I guess you could say. And he's got weird glasses on, which doesn't really make any sense, but you don't really complain either. I'm like, I feel like that just makes his Lego not look so generic with the glasses. I feel like it's probably, they're trying to make him probably look kind of like Michael Sarah. Yeah, I think that, too. And that then like, maybe yeah. with the green, maybe with the green glasses, it's kind of like, even though it's a boy. The Domino mask. Kind of like Domino mask, or like Carrie Kelly. Oh, Carrie Kelly, because, yeah, it kind of has that. That's why I feel like it kind of has a mix-match of different mm-hmm. things there. But no, and then like, you know, the, the whole movie, it's it's a pretty straight, stri- it actually, something this movie does, which kind of threw us, uh, threw me a curveball, was, uh, I mean, I, I thought it was going to be pretty straightforward Batman movie, but there's, th- there I saw so many trailers and so many little TV spots and ads for it. I assumed it was kind of like a Batman v Superman, where it's like, all right, they probably just show me most of the movie, it would just be a fun movie, but there's so much in that they left out of the trailers, which I'm glad about. And initially, my first gut reaction was kind of like, 
I'd rather just have more Batman. I'm like, well, it's also a Lego movie, so that actually kind of makes sense. You mean when they start, when they go into um, the Phantom Zone? The, the Phantom Zone. Well, because when, like, you know, Joker decides, it gets to that point where he's like, Batman tells Joker he doesn't love him or <laughs> doesn't, thing, doesn't hate him. The other thing is, like, they try to, they almost, they have no problem trying to make a gay joke out of this. Like, it's literally. And there's a lot of gay jokes in this one. It feels like this movie's kind of like, without anybody saying they're gay, it's like everybody's just all like, there's the Joker Batman thing. They kind of make that like, oh, we, I thought we were in this relationship together. Like, no, <laughs> that Batman just goes alone. He doesn't need anybody. In the Robin, the Batman thing. Well, that there's a line I thought was just hilarious when because Bruce Wayne accidentally adopts Robin because he's paying attention to Barbara Gordon, and then there's the part where like when Alfred lets Robin to the Batcave, he's like hanging off Batman. He's like, oh well, I can't just take off like right here, you know? I mean, like we gotta let Bruce Wayne know. It's like, oh yeah. Me and Bruce, we both like shared custody of you, so it's okay. He's like, oh, so I have two dads. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just that kind of funny thing. Like I never thought about that. But it's like, oh, it's like <laughs> he just assumes that Bruce Wayne and Batman are fucking gay lovers. Well, it's also funny because all these things happen. It would make you automatically think Bruce Wayne, but then people just work their way around it. Like Joker finds out, like that Joker finds out that Batcave was under Wayne Manor. He's like, <gasps> they're roommates. Yeah, yeah, sure. They're, they're roommates. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I like too. It's like nobody questions it. They just think that it's these two men living together. Yeah. And then um, it even even works on the scale of being a Batman movie. Like if you just take away the comedy and co- and like the concept alone, I think that when I mean, the villains they get at the very end, I think that that's the one thing where it's just like okay, you couldn't do that in a Batman movie. But Lego Batman movie, it works. Like I'm gonna say, basically, and there's there's even a part. Cause, I, I like this. When I went to go see Lego, ba- I, mean, I want to see it again to see if just almost first off to catch the jokes I missed. Secondly, see if this happens again. There's a part like after the big giant awesome brawl, it's just Batman and Joker left over. And um, what ends up happening is uh, Batman, like Joker, there's a whole line like, what about us? And Batman's like, there is no us or whatever. And they show that part in the, in the trailer, but they show it a little bit more of it in the movie. And, it's so fucking brutal. It literally sounds like it's basically the equivalent like, no, we fucked. You mean nothing to me. It's the equivalent to that. And Joker even looks sadder in the tr- in this movie than he does in the trailer. And so many people were like, oh, like on that part. So many girls in the that. audience were like, oh, just like that. No, even men were doing that. Older men, too. Yeah. <laughs> there was a guy with like his kid he's like that's so fucking sad <laughs> so it's basically joker trying to prove himself with the help of harley quinn why he's worthy to batman and um his plan is almost getting involved by getting sent to the phantom zone to recruit him and then har- having harley quinn grab the uh bring him back from the phantom zone with his new army and what happens when that when i first found that out was i assumed it would just be a bunch of deep cut dc villains it that's what i thought too like i literally was like oh crap they're gonna go there we're gonna have all kinds of dc parts in here it's not that at all he comes back with villains from a bunch of other warner brothers franchises now my gut reaction and even non-warner brothers franchises i think king kong's owned by warner brothers by this point maybe he's public domain i that's what i know because king kong's universal you're right uh maybe but uh, king kong might be public domain because of well that's a weird one it's always that kind of thing isn't Kong Island? Isn't Kong Island uh, coming out by Warner Brothers? I thought that was Universal maybe this whole time. Maybe I there's something. Wrong, yeah, well, e- even even that, there's still they. If they did, they paid enough, right? They paid some money to get King Kong in there, or they just mispronounce it. They just like slightly mispronounce them, so that's vague about it. But um, well, that's because like because they have like Godzilla in there, but they never call him Godzilla. You know, they got some. They got like almost like a creature from the Black Lagoon, but they don't call him that. Like the certain ones, they don't name them off. And then they have the Wicked Witch from the West, which Wizard of Oz is public domain, but I think uh, well, Warner, Bro- Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers, but I don't, I don't think Warner Brothers made Wizard of Oz, but I think they bought Wizard of Oz and they own the original one now. You know, was that well? They they've owned it for a long time, so unless it was like something like an RKO picture or something that got. I thought it was maybe I'm wrong. I thought it was something like an RKO, not RKO picture, but something like that. And then like somewhere in the 70s, Warner Brothers bought it. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, because I would say they've had it forever. I know that. Maybe unless they always were Warner Brothers, maybe. But anyway, they had Wicked Witch of the West. They had uh, the dialects. Agent Smith. Agent Smith. They had the dialects. That was my favorite. But that was the one where it's like, oh, because at first I was like, oh, that's kind of weird to do that. And then they showed Agent Smith. I'm like, oh, okay. Agent Smith, that's pretty cool. 
they had the dialects from Doctor Who, which I thought was funny. The thing of the dialects came in, Joker's was like, ask your nerd friends. Yeah, I know. I, I was, I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's probably what it is. So I'm like, I don't know what that is, but I'm pretty sure it's something nerdy. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, there's even more. There is like the, there is a Sar- Sauron from uh, Lord of the Rings, the tower, the eyeball thing. Yeah, well, because all the main ones are all Warner Brothers stuff, because then there's Voldemort, mm-hmm. or Voldemort from Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah. So And, yeah, I don't know who else. There, there's a lot, but... And that, I guess at, the fir- at first, I was kind of like, well, that seems like an opportunity to get in more Batman and more DC stuff. But then, I kind of thought about, I'm like, well, Legos is now all about just mashing all this shit together. And then Gremlins, the Gremlins. Oh, the Gremlins one was cool. And then I liked, too, because they... They had another reference in there when they were on the plane and the gremlins started pulling the apart metal. the plane. I'm like, oh my God, there's a heavy metal reference. <laughs> that was badass. It's, because originally that heavy metal, um, that that skit by that 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 uh that short by in heavy metal by Joe Dante, that was originally it was like an orb that was possessing people and turning them into monsters and killing everyone on board. Originally that was all meant to be gremlins ripping the plane apart. And he says, you know, I'm gonna use my idea. From that, from that, from that uh, short that I ever got to make and put it in this movie and make Gremlins, and that was cool. They went back to the original idea and had them just destroying the bat plane. But that part was like amazing. It's just like there's so many cool references in here, whether they're DC or movie ones. And then also too, like I understand the movie one because at the same time you're going, okay, it's Lego Batman. It's like me personally, I probably would like if, if the script was in process, I'd be like, no, make those all DC characters. That's the way I would have went. But thinking about it, like, for a wide audience, I'm like, well, I understand, like, because that's the thing is, like, you think you're watching a Lego Batman movie, and if you're somebody who doesn't know a whole lot about Batman, all of a sudden it's like, oh, my God, there's fucking Lord of the Rings and Matrix and all this other, like, I know all those things. So having that all come together, I bet you that's really cool to somebody who's not, like, a super DC fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's one of those things where watching this movie, it was kind of, at first I was kind of like, oh, well, let's hope to see more of the villains. And the villains, all the different villains team up with Batman at the end to stop Joker and all these other Warner Brothers properties. Yeah, so it all kind of comes around and seems to work out in the long run, I mm-hmm. feel. No, this was, I mean, like, it's one of those things where it's like, I gotta, I want to watch the movie again. Because remember when I first saw it, I really liked it. But I, I feel like I might like it more a second time around, you know, because there's just so many jokes you just kind of laugh over. Oh, well, I agree too, because as I said, it was like I actually got kind of like burnt out laughing, and like not in a burnt out like in a bad way, but like it tuckered me out about halfway in the movie. So it was more like from my last being like humongous and big, it was like <laughs> like almost like you start turning to Beavis and Buddy, like <laughs> like you couldn't really take too much of a real laugh anymore. Well, if, when the plus when the movie first starts, op- that opens up, it's almost trying to out like break the fourth wall. It's it's almost trying to outbeat Deadpool on that because it opens up before you even get the title card, just blacks. It's like. Black. All important movies start with black, along with creepy, edgy music that might scare moms and studio executives. <laughs> it's like it's like one of the like slow, like distor- disoriented panel or the, the logo lets you know it's an important movie too. Yeah, it's like what are what are bros animation? I mean bros, bros. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes and it gets like dc just like yeah dc how suit batman built come at me superman come at me bro <laughs> i know this the house that batman built i just like this all the little things there but yeah it's just like it was like constant laugh at so really the entire movie is funny it's almost probably the best way to watch is probably to watch 45 minutes of it and then take a break and come back to it and when you're like after you've taken a nap and then watch the next 45 minutes so you're all prepared. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, there there was a few parts where it just felt like it was just like almost like making it rain with jokes. Like one of them's going to hit like around like the middle point. But I mean, most of them are funny. It's just a few of them just like, yeah, they can't all be winners. But mo- luckily, most of them are. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, for the most part, I would say, yeah, it's mostly all there. Yeah, just so many little things and details that they have in there that it's almost like that'd be the great part about watching the movie over. It's just because I feel like you can't take all that movie in at once, nor can you remember all of that movie in one thing. Because I just remember all kinds of great stuff. But now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, man, I can't remember half of it now. I remember tons of funny things. I will say. But then also, I like a lot of the songs in there, too, because that was like the thing is I could listen to the soundtrack over and over. So like the Robin song, like even though it's like super poppy, it's like. Oh, that's a fun song. I like that one where like Robin's like, "Hey, I'm texting you in the morning." Shut up, boy. <laughs> well, if it's like even like like I, I've listened, like I said, I listened to the 
who's the man with the gadgets, Batman? I listen to that so many times because even if you just like take out certain parts of it, it almost just sounds like a regular like death metal song if you just didn't, weren't even listening to the words. Oh yeah, because well, it's like a really well made song. But even like because the, there's only like eight. It almost sounds like a star bomb song, kinda. Yeah, almost like that. And there's only about like maybe like six or seven or eight songs on that entire album. Because when you listen to the CD, you realize that like a bunch of them are kind of like the just the variations of them. And stuff, mm-hmm. and then there's like the Robin one, and then there's the other Batman. There's a, there's the other one where it's like, God, what the heck is it? It's like there's another Batman song later on too, the one where he starts rapping. Maybe that's a Robin song too, where he starts to sound like Macho Man Randy Savage's rap album, but it's <laughs> Batman. It's like, oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> I'll say that like people, because I listened to some early reviews on this, like you see Batman beatboxing a lot more than you need to. I'm like, you mean the one part where he's in the jail cell? And he's bored. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I thought they were almost going to, they were making out to be, there's a huge musical number at the end where he's beatboxing. I'm like, uh, maybe there's that one little sex where he's slightly rapping when he's singing the Robin song, but whatever, you know. Um, it's not even a big deal. It's funny. Like, what? Like, is that not funny to somebody? Like, Batman? I think some people just got to, even, even people who liked it were talking about that. I mean, I just think people need to find something to push against. I don't know. Like, I like the movie, but let me single in on this one thing so I can sound like I'm being a critic. Yeah, just like, I hate those kind of people so much. Because there weren't really the ones, like, at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with this movie. The only thing that probably, as I said, my and threw me a curveball, and it sounds like it did you, too, is, like, when they went to the Phantom Zone, I guess just the DC-ness in us was expecting to see a bunch of random-ass DC characters. So at first, I was kind of like, oh, that's kind of a bum. I was kind of, like, bummed out at first there. Same just slightly. Not, not Not a whole lot, but that, to me, was like, oh, you could have done a... I thought this movie was going to go super DC. I thought but then when I think like about a... it more, I'm like, no, no, no. I get why they did that. You know, to make the movie seem way more wide appealing. Because if they went in there and started pulling out, like, all these Green Lantern characters and Flash. I mean, that's going to really throw people off. You know what I mean? They already had the random ass Batman characters. And that worked fine for that. But to get there where it's like, oh, okay, now we're, now we're going to be kind of confused. And, yeah, so I understand, like, why they did that. And uh, so I think... When I watch it again, I'll be like, oh, no, I'm 100% with that now. Something I did notice that whenever they would acknowledge like other characters, like other villains, I'm not really sure why. Maybe they're just trying to drive home. They're like, nope, that's how he really looks. That's actually Bane. They pointed out to Bane a lot. Like whenever they whenever they made like a, a reference to like a, a villain other than Joker, it was Bane. Yeah, Bane was in there a lot, and then they even the cool thing is they used the Bane voice from like Dark Knight Rises, which I thought was funny. Yeah, yeah, or, or like it'd be like one of those things. Like I think they're almost trying to. That didn't bother me at all, but it's one of those things. I think they're trying to drive home because he looks different for, in, for, in that than he did in Dark Knight Rises. So I think they're trying to like, nope, that's Bane. That's Bane. Just so you know, that is Bane. Yeah, maybe that is what they're trying to go for there. You know, what's another thing. I think this is actually something that what makes this movie really top a lot of even just regular Batman stories is. They have the part where Commissioner Gordon ends up retiring and Barbara Gordon comes in. And I think I, I like the way they actually kind of did this. It's like instead of her being Batgirl right away, it's like, oh, no, she was literally training her whole life to become the commissioner. So, you know, I like how they, she's like she went to pol- she went to Harvard Police Academy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said Harvard like, for police. It's just even said that. <laughs> yeah. And she's got like a T-shirt on that. And, you know, she and even it's cool because they say like, oh, yeah, she she fought the crime in Bloodhaven and brought that to justice there. And now she's here in Gotham. And we're like in a lot of Batman stories, it's always like, oh, here comes a new commissioner. What's the first thing we got to do? We got to hang that Batman. Let's get a lynch mob out. But in this one, it's like, no, they do it like super smart. Where It's like, no, no, you know, Batman's here. And here's the thing. Yeah, Batman's great. I'm not saying anything against it. But none of these criminals, they keep coming back. Have you ever noticed that? Like they kind of point out, like they kind of break the wall there going like, yeah, he's been finding these people for 75 years. And no matter what, none of them ever seem to go away. They keep going on committing crimes. But at the same time, we got to work with Batman. So I thought that was such like a smart way to kind of tie it in, not making Batman seem like public enemy number one. But it was trying to get him to work together. And the whole thing was that Batman's like, I don't work together. I work alone. I I feel like it's one of those things where um, I feel like that whole aspect Regarding the, like, sh- shit, I had something, what was it? You what, sort of, Say what you were saying again one more time. There's there's something. Uh, Barbara Gordon, Barbara Gordon teaming, teaming together, together with, with Batman. Batman. Not not kind of like trying to lynch mob him. There uh, was. Batman saying no and working not working together, not being a team player. Man, there's something I was I had for that. There's something I thought it was a point I was going to make regarding that. Fuck it. Lo- I, I, I lost it. It'll come back to me. We'll just but keep anyway. going. Well, it's like I love that part too when they like Barbara going first sees Robin and stuff. And she's like, "Is that your son?" 
no. He's like, he's like, oh, no, no, that's not my son. He's like, well, that seems much weirder if it's not your kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, it's just like, it's actually weirder if it's not your kid. <laughs> this, like, pantsless kid running around. The thing is, Robin's just so happy. There's really nothing that brings him down. He's just, like, bouncing off the walls, like, nothing. And they even kind of get across. I like how they're trying to drive home. Like, what I like about these Lego movies is they'll use things that are dark and are sad, but they'll use it in a funny way. Like, a family photo, I always wanted one of those. <laughs> you know, like, like, some of the saddest shit, like, almost a punchline. But yeah, it's, it's funny at the same time. Well, it's kind of, because that, that Robin actually reminds me of, like, early days, drunk Batman and Robin. Like, that kind of Robin, before Robin became an alcoholic. Before, or, like, you know, just, like, you know, just hated everything. Yeah, like... Like, uh, there, there was something regarding the villains I was going to say, but, um... And a certain aspect of it was, I kind of wish that they, I mean, this isn't like a big deal because they've already have so much going on in that movie. I wish they had a chance to make more characters out of like, not all the villains, because there's so many always hanging around, but a few more. Because they almost treat it like there's Joker and then everybody else is a henchman. Yeah, they so kind of they do that. I would have wish uh, Billy D. Williams, who had like two or three lines as Two Face, had like a little bit more, you know. And that was or, awesome that they had him as Two Face. That was like one of those things I didn't notice that till the credits. I was like, oh my god, that's such a cool thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he finally got it. Which I think he would have been an awesome Two Face. Thinking I think about so. it. he would amazing. You could still make think, a Two Face this day. I don't care. He'd be old Two Face. I'm gonna. I'll say. You know what? If they do bring Two Face into the DC universe, the theatrical DC universe. I'm going to say just go Billy D. Williams. Let him go yeah, for it. Yeah, because if Batman's going to be older, make Two-Face be older. Like, why not? Like, that, that'll be yeah. fine. I mean, he's a bit older than Batman, but still. <laughs> yeah, he's a bit older, but that's okay. I assume Batman was fighting Two-Face when Two-Face was already older anyways. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, that, sometimes they're the same age. Sometimes Two-Face is a little older. I think it works. Yeah, exactly. That would be kind of cool. But no, I thought that was awesome how that was there. Another thing that I think was really cool, I like how they made Alfred like a key player too. And he even had his own like costume. It was like a, it was like a butler version of like Batman costume. But I was like, that's badass. Well, the thing about that is that may even be a callback to something else. But um, that he actually wore a similar outfit whenever he went driving them around in um, the 1940s Batman. He wore like a mask. Well, that's right. I don't know. Now, the, the whole... The whole, um, the whole like Batman emblem. I don't think he had that, but he would dress no. up like it is a disguise himself when driving them around. That's right. I do. I, I forgot about that. And that makes about sense when they that just drive around like in their old like 1940s Ford and then go like beat up thugs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's one jaywalking. <laughs> yeah, get him. Just start smacking him around. The other thing about that is I kind of like there because they're you know of course being a Batman movie, even though it was late at night. There's a lot of uh, people taking their kids to see it. So I like that I could see there's parents. I, I don't know what it is. Almost a little bit of people watching. It might sound kind of weird, but parents taking their kids to go see the movie and the parents not looking that excited. And then the second they start, the second the movie gets going, you hear everyone laughing, but then they have the older references kind of like, and that weird one in 1966 and they show footage and like, you hear like all the people. Adam West dancing. Yeah, yeah. All the laughter you hear on that part was primarily old people. Not old people, but older, well, like, like people our age and up, more than likely. Yeah, old pe old man, orange <laughs> people. <laughs> but I think that's what makes it kind of cool is that it, it references, you know, things like, it'll reference, you know, Dark Knight, and it'll reference, you know, 89 Batman and 66 Batman. And it even goes back to, like, the serial Batmans and the comic books, and it, and it, you know, pulls from so many different areas. Like, other parts, too, this would be a cool part once you get, like, the Blu-rays, you could pause it. It's like, when he's in the Batcave, there's so much stuff in there. Like, when it shows those Batmobiles, I mean, there's, like, 30 of them in there. And you're like, you just almost want to pause and look. Because, you know, I could catch a couple of them. It's like, oh, there's Batman Forever. There's 89 Batman. There's 66 Batman. There's the Batman one with the face mask on it from, like, the comic. There's, you know, but it goes by so quickly, you can't see them all. Uh, yeah, I remember what I was going to say now, originally. What I like about this movie is, one thing I liked about it was, they almost acknowledge, like, everything, even though it would be a con new to the air but fuck it who cares it acknowledges that all the other it's kind of like everything batman rolled into one you know it doesn't really answer mm -hmm. questions of like well robin wasn't there before but like they make jokes and references kind of like when joker first gets there he says like i got a better plan better plan than the uh two boats the bomb oh wait, way better than that better than the parade with the prince music way better than that you know <laughs> and then when he's having his like it's the movie doesn't isn't afraid to actually stray away from actual emotion which same thing with the original lego movie 
it's some because at some point, like when Joker is having his real big moment with Batman, not a moment that's meant to be all that funny, he actually says, "For seventy eight years, we've been going at it." Kind of like self aware <laughs> that, like, no, this is all kind of like within the same universe, within the same continuity of some kind, or just. Or that's based off this or something to that effect. And I kind of like that it really broke down this. It's kind of like uh, they sort of, even though Joker's really the villain out of that, they kind of make Batman the villain in some way. Because when he actually gets to the Phantom Zone, he's like, no, no, I'm a good guy. I'm a good guy. I need to get back there. He's like, well, you're not a bad guy. And they're going through all the shitty things he said and done to people. Yeah, you got this like robot, like scanning batman going through all his life it just kind of shows batman just being like a dick well, the over thing is it's not again. really it reaches a point where it's not even all that funny with the combination of the music and the things you're doing is you're not a bad person but you're not a good person either you know and then it shows like the part where he says to alfred and like when you when when, the, when it first happens you laugh but it, yeah my internet's being all shitty again well i'm just overheated which is something that most people can't say <laughs> oh yours overheated yeah, but oh. I look back and like, oh, it's sitting in the sun. So it re- when they, if it gets too hot, it'll just turn itself off. So okay, here I thought it was I just my had to shit. move it out of the way. Yeah, no, that's all it was. Okay, but you were saying Alfred, Alfred, like there's a part where he, Batman's all saying to him like, saying like, well, like Batman's like, you know, I took you under my wing. Maybe you take this kid under your wing. And, and then Batman's like, Alfred, you never were a parent, so you don't know what it's like either. You, you don't have parents. You don't have a family just like me, you know? And then, like, <laughs> or, it was something really shitty and condescending. Yeah, it's a really shitty Batman line. Condescending line. When he first says it, it's so fucked up. You smile and you laugh. But when they replay it, and it's Batman looking at it through a different prism, and they have the sad music playing over it, it actually, all these things he said, he said and done are genuinely actually heartfelt now the thing about it is i'm not gonna lie people can go ahead and call me a pussy but when i first saw a lego movie when i first saw it i actually i didn't but i came close to crying there's the part well go ahead oh i was just gonna say whenever it's an alfred moment that's always the part that's always like the tear jerk because i remember it's like there's even a part it's funny but like this is like almost like in that movie when batman comes home he's all computer where's where's alfred at and it's like He's upstairs tiling the fifth bathroom. <laughs> tiling. And those are always those things where you like, God, Alfred works so goddamn fucking hard. Doesn't matter if it's the comic book, the movies, like whatever it is, you, I always feel so bad for Alfred. It's very rarely do you ever go like, you know, I mean, like, I don't feel bad for that Alfred guy. It's not like he's kicked up. Like, what, what's Alfred doing? Oh, he's downstairs watching movies. He's been watching it for the last eight hours. <laughs> no, he's fucking working hard. I feel bad. You feel like uh, when Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo are working on it, you feel bad for Alfred so much because there's that part in zero year where Alfred's just saying, you know what? Like, I don't like the idea of you doing this. Quite frankly, you doing this behind a mask seems kind of cowardice, you know? And then he grabs him by the collar. She's like, really? What's coward? What's cowardly for me about doing this? What you just polishing silverware your whole life after you went to this and went to that. And you're just working for my family. Never had the guts to find a real job. And he smacks Bruce. He's like, I'm sorry. I should go. <laughs> and he walks out the door and then, like, Batman's, this whole time, he's been working with this voice command, like, hook thing. He says, come back. Alfred turns, says, I was talking to the hook. <laughs> and then, like, Alfred <laughs> just keeps, you see from a distance, he, like, from a distance, you see kind of, like, wa- like brushes away at his eye. And then once he leaves, Batman then gets mad, like, why the fuck did I do that? It's like, fuck you, Hook. Yeah, well, he's almost more like, yeah, it's almost kind of like, right, he, co- he comes back around. They've always come back around and make up. But that was one of those moments where you could see Batman was like, just like, why the fuck did I do that? I'm such a fucking asshole. In this movie, he's almost like oblivious to that. To be in this is like total ass to like Alfred. Because this is like one of the few cases where he loves being Batman. He loves doing it because he loves the attention and he just doesn't you know, want to go out and do the actual, have a real family or have anything of substance. Well, at least it's like, there's like on the Adam West last movie that came out, the Cape Crusaders one, that part was too. It's like, it, it comes around in the end of that movie, but first when Batman's like firing Alfred and Alfred's out living on the street, <laughs> you're like, holy crap. And it's funny too, because you're like, this is in the Adam West one. Well, because he got, well, it was funny because he got sprayed with some, with some shit that would make him, basically acts more like how Batman really would act. Cause he was quoting dark Knight returns. He was quoting like, let's get, you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. You know, <laughs> he was doing all the, he was doing all like the darker, weirder lines. And then like, uh, 
when he comes back, he says like, "Well, I was working along with Bruce Wayne the whole time because we had this we had this mutual agreement that." If he ever fired me, it was because he was under some kind of influence of an evil potion, you know, just some very convoluted thing. <laughs> but it's just, I remember the first, like, when he, I don't remember what he says, but it's just like such a, like, oh my God. He's just like, get out of here, Alfred. We don't need your assistance anymore. Just, it was like some, uh, Alfred did some, it was like very, some very small thing. Like, he, like yeah, like something broke or he did something wrong. It's like nothing that big of a deal. It's just like, you, you, it's just like, you could leave for the night. No, forever. There's something like that. Yeah, and it's just like, oh my god. There's just there's so many of those moments. It's like even in Batman Arkham Origins. I remember that part too, when like they have that big argument there towards the end and everything like that's like my poor Alfred. I always gotta put up with so much crap from this guy. I know. And but I I'll, going back to what I was saying originally, like the original Lego movie, I'm not gonna lie, the part when um it cuts the live action and you see the kid interacting with Will Ferrell dad. Like that whole part, I'm not gonna lie, as much of a pussy as made me sound, I kind of came close to tearing up on that whole scene right there. Now, oh yeah, this movie, I didn't maybe because I was almost expecting that, so it didn't really happen. But the parts that actually did get emotional were genuinely emotional because when there's like the robot brick thing talking to Batman about going back, it's not go playing for laughs. It's just like, look, I gotta go back, I gotta fix it. Sec I promise I'll fix it this time. It was almost kind of like a Christmas carol or it's a wonderful life kind of moment where he's just like, I can fix it this time. Like, well, how you keep doing the same mistake. What are you going to do different this time? And it's like a very sincere emotional moment in the movie. Oh yeah, totally. And just kind of getting that part where Batman finally, cause that's the thing about this movie too, just like the other Lego movie, it's got like an amazing, like moral at it. And I know like, I think that's one of those ones that like, Trying to tell that to like a fifteen year old kid is like, I don't need movies that have morals in it. I need movies that have like cool action in it, and like Keanu Reeves and things like that. And then, like as you get to an adult, you're like, I like when the movies have a good moral. I think they should have a message. Damn it, <laughs> send the kids something home with. Well, like I'm gonna say this. Um, you and me, we both like the DC movies. Um, I'm not. I wasn't huge on Suicide Squad. I'm. I'm still. A, I'm a major defender of Man of Steel. I really like. I like Batman v Superman. I know it has its problems, but I like the movie. But I'm a major, major defender of Man of Steel. And but the thing is, I think there are, we're only two movies in, and I think at the moment though, this almost seems like the the closest thing Warner Brothers has to either a Marvel Cinematic Universe or a Pixar. Just these movies that come out, and everyone seems to like them. Now we won't know because we're only two movies in. The third one coming out. I was when I first heard that movie was being made. I'm like, whatever. Then I saw the trailer. I'm like, I'm there. Okay, <laughs> no, because it's like the Ninjago thing. My nephews watched Ninjago, and I saw a couple episodes. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing about the Lego movies. The main reason I was apprehensive when I first heard about a Lego movie being made was because I saw these Cartoon Network movies and these straight to video ones where the animation looks more like very just very you know cg very cg very car where these ones are made to look like stop motion so there's the straight to dvd and television stuff and those aren't really all that funny or that great i've watched a few of them with my nephews and i even watched one of the lego batman ones on netflix which is like okay that's kind of and it was not nearly as up to par yeah and there's like a few funny moments but it, when it's not a different it's a different kind of lego batman it's not like it's lego bat it's almost like batman from the comics but he's in the Lego universe where everyone else is being kind of funny and wacky. And um, yeah, so it's more like a serious, in a sense, serious, but kid serious show, not like a almost like half comedy, half like it still is. A, it, I'd say the, the one Lego Batman movie I watched on Netflix, you know, like I was just curious one day. It was like Batman. He had to go. It was almost like Batman. He had to get different members of the Justice League to stop. I don't remember who, but basically it was almost kind of like, all right, now I'm going to go work with the Flash. Now I'm going to go work with Wonder Woman. Now I'm going to work with Superman. And everything else was being all funny. Batman was the one big, I'm serious, but everyone else is being funny. I don't like it, you know, and it wasn't, it wasn't God awful, but it wasn't amazing. It was, it was like, you know, if you're a little kid, you'd probably love it. And I saw... Because I've always wanted to get those, mainly just for the fact I'm like, well, I own everything else Batman was. I feel like that's something missing from my collection. And I remember seeing the trailers not thinking they looked. I'm like, yeah, they're probably decent. I'm not going to expect them to be like a DCU movie, but you know. You know, the one I, the only one I watched was decent. It wasn't like I got to go out and own it. I didn't really feel need to watch it again, but it was like, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, it could have been way worse. Let's say that. But um, I watched some of the stuff. I watched a little bit of Ninjago with my nephew. And like, this show is a bunch of horse shit. This is fucking stupid. 
And then they, so when they say they're making a Ninjago movie, I'm like, I, did, did you literally think you became your dad sitting down watching cat dog with you like in your brain? Going, this is fucking horseshit. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I felt it. I felt like, I'm like, what do you go grab a beer? You just felt like you, you looked in the mirror and it was just you with like a white, like mustache and glasses. Like I have finally become him. Now I'm the older one who doesn't understand. I'm suddenly wearing a NASCAR shirt. <laughs> Yeah, I don't like it unless it's Emerson, Lake, and Palmer as far as music's concerned. I literally turned into my dad. You pull out two concert tickets to Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. You're like, was I there last night? I don't remember. And then like, um, but no, anyway, yeah, I was just sitting there. I mean, I, I wasn't going to be like talked down to him like, this show's fucking stupid. It's like, yeah, because I'm fucking older. So, of course, I'm going to find it fucking stupid. But then seeing the trailer for Ninjago, it... That looked pretty fucking good. <laughs> it's fucking funny. I'm not going to lie. It's like, it's just, it's that same type of humor. It's like some of this, it's like even like the delivery of the character's lines. Like there's the part where like, you know, they're fighting the evil bad guy. And he says like, this is like, oh, we'll fight, we'll fight again. Like, I know, dad. And they stop like, wait, 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 sorry. What, what, what was that? I didn't hear you. Oh, I, I didn't say nothing. No, yo, you said something. What'd you say? I, I was talking and then I said, and I was done talking. Dad takes off his helmet. And he's like, Lloyd? He's like, no, 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 it's Lloyd. No, no it's two L's. I, I named you. I know. <laughs> Which is funny because that's always like, that's like the main Irish way to name Lloyd is of two L's. That made me laugh. <laughs> he even said like, it's the thing like, you ruined my life. He's just like, how can I ruin your life? I was even there for it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That line right there, I was like, oh my God. And I think the thing about the, the I almost want to call it Ninjango because I feel like that's the old man way to pronounce it, but it's Jago. And it's that thing where I look at that and go, you know what? I don't know anything of these characters, but if it's going to be just as funny as Batman in the Lego movie and it's well written, I'm like, I'm there. I don't care. That looks awesome. More of this. Yeah. And it's it's different from the cartoon, which I've seen with my nephew. It has the whole like same style as the movies and that same style of humor. So, I mean, right now it's like two for two. So it's like they've got they've we'll see how this next one does. But it seems like it's almost kind of like, wow, I'm. The one thing that Warner Brothers is putting out that everyone seems to like are these Lego movies of all things. Well, because it's kind of funny. It's like, really, if you let's just say, like, you made the Batman movies, like, the way that the Lego movie is, but just kept it serious. It's like, that's that's what they got there. They're doing everything you want. You know what I mean? They look identical to it. And it's like, that's that's what you want. You know, you look at those characters. You know who that is. Bane. That's Bane. You know who that is. They don't have to even say that, even though they do say it, but say you know who that is. They say, it's like, <laughs> they want you to know who it is, but you already know who I it think is. They, they kept on saying it just for in case of the people who saw Dark Knight Rises, but don't read the comics. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, there was, there was just so much good stuff in that Lego Batman movie. Like, yeah, it really is. I think most if somebody told me that was their favorite Batman movie all the time, I'd be like, I understand. That makes sense. You know, re realistically, it probably is the most well-made Batman movie of all time. I just kind of got like, well, you know, I always got a soft spot for the 89 Batman movie. And I always like Batman and Robin quite a bit. And Dark Knight's so good. And Batman Begins is like the perfect example of how you do an origin movie. You know, and then there's all the DCU ones. So I got a lot to compare it to. But yeah. overall, it's like, it's, it is so amazing. You know what I mean? Well, it's like one of those things where the movie, it really did just... It just kind of hit all the right notes, you know. It was funny. The action you they made they found a, they found a way to make Legos fighting look cool. Yeah, exactly. Like the stylized of it looks great. And the thing about the Batman one compared to like the other Lego movie, it's actually less of a Lego movie. They just happened to everybody looks like Legos. Because in the other one, I just remember like there was a lot like, oh yeah, we got to build stuff, and it was all kind of like based off Lego and designing and being like, do you follow the instructions or do you build it yourself and all this stuff. But this Batman one, you know, he builds a couple of vehicles, but that's about it. There's not a whole lot of building in this one and things like that, and not really like Lego oriented stuff as much. It's more, it happens to be a Batman movie that just happens to have a Lego skin. If you there, you know there's mean. a couple of uh, there's a couple of moments where even like even though the movie is still pretty. Uh, funny the whole way and they do take there's a few moments where they do take a moment to get serious but i like how they even find a way to double layer like a sad moment on top of that like there's the part where he has to go it alone because he's batman and it's like the final battle and he has like, all right guys go go inside the uh scuttler and see if you know grab some supplies and there's a couple of vitamin waters in there you know just something random like that they go in there then he locks it up and then he's just like 
go out of here, get the blood haven, just, like wait where it's safe. I got this alone because I'm Batman, whatever. And then the scuttler is just like all nuzzling him like it's a dog. Like, no, you go, you go. <laughs> no, I like when they had that. Like it's a dog movie, like the moment where you have to get rid of Air Bud. <laughs> like it's Encino Man, like you get out of here, <laughs> you be free. Exactly, something like that. And it, that, that movie, it just like, it just, I can't really just say how I just can't really help but just get get across how good that movie did and, and I want to see it again. Who knows? Maybe I'll see it a second time. Like never mind. <laughs> I was caught up with the euphoria. You know, I can't imagine that. You know, I think it'll still be. It'll be like the Lego Movie where you watch it again. You're like, oh my god, this movie is even better than I even remember it. I thought of it being amazing at first, and then yeah, I think the Jago one's gonna be awesome. I just think that those Lego things. It's strange enough. Like as far as movie go, that's the thing they're like the most dialed in with. Because, you know, like, the games are like those ones, like, you play one Lego game, you're like, oh, man, this is really awesome, this is really fun. Then you play a second one, you're kind of like, well, this is kind of cool, it's really much the same thing. And then by about the third one, you're like, okay, they're literally the same thing. <laughs> it's apparently the games that saved them. Those are the video games. That... Yeah, it's weird how that is, because Lego just kind of got to the point where people... <laughs> Because literally kids are like, I want fucking Legos. I want like a video game, Mom. Jesus Christ. I think it was two things. I think A, because Legos were always really expensive. B. I, well, that's yeah, I was to say because poor kids can't really get Legos. B, it was also for a while, it was they didn't they only they didn't have a lot of licensing. And I think one of the only licenses they had for a while was Star Wars. And they said, you know what? We got this Indiana Jones style adventurer thing. Let's just get fucking Indiana Jones. Oh, while we're at it, fuck it. Let's get Jurassic Park too. You know? And then I feel like from there they're just like you know what? Harry Potter. We we had like magic and knights and all that. Fuck that. Let's just get Harry Potter. That's what people fucking want. Yeah, it's like, you know, we'll get Lord of the Rings too. We'll have them all. And now it's all, I think his Lego must be owned by Warner Brothers, or at least Warner Brothers has a huge share in it. Originally, I, I heard, um, this actually kind of worked out. Uh, originally, instead of Batman in the Lego movie, it was going to be R2-D2. And then, um, cause R2-D2 is it's just like a, such a weird, like they're not even like, it's not like, Oh, it's going to be Indiana Jones or something like that. It's like, no, no they wanted a big licensed character of some kind. And it was going to be R2-D2 with them the whole time. But then that's when the transition to star Wars was going to Disney. So they're like, uh, well we can get this one little scene, but there might be trouble with R2-D2 there the whole time. Like, you know what? Batman, what if we made it Batman? There's way more, there way more ways to make it more funnier and do more jokes with Batman. And Oh shit. What if he's like, the love it. What if he's like the boyfriend to the love interest? Cause that right there, like who, who wants to compete with Batman? That's like the hardest thing to compete with, you know? So that became the whole thing with it. Like Batman is the dude is like the, is the bro douchebag boyfriend. <laughs> and I think that works out so well. Cause at first, like you picture that it's like R2D. I'm not saying the R2D wouldn't be cool to have with you, but it's like, how much can you really, you it's, know? Well, it's one of those things. Like, he would have just been the ultimate tag along character. And that would have been, yeah. It. And I think, you know, I mean, that would have been, I think if it was a team of people, like everybody they already had in R2D2, that'd be cool. But I mean, Bat, but how yeah. much could he really do? <laughs> but okay. R2D2 is cool, but Batman. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> R2D2 is just a gadget in Batman's belt. That's all yeah. I gotta say. <laughs> He's just like one smoke bomb. That's it. Well, it's like I just want to say there's that part where he's just like, good ideas or whatever else had zero. Batman, 5068, you know, and then like and then like when when they he takes someone else's advice, you know what? Good ideas other people had. One. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like there's three of you there, but we'll just count it as one. There's one part that I think that this there's a lot of times where we're just going off of like, what's the funny part that you liked? I'll tell you what I like. But it's been a slow week just, for me, so might as well just be all Lego Batman by this point. Small things like this, it was like when they first get in the Batmobile and Batman's like, oh, I love having you here. You take orders like a fucking champ. Let's go. And they're driving. He's like, Batman, there's no seatbelts here. Oh, dude, you don't need no seatbelts or anything like that. And they're fucking driving the Batmobile, just like flooring it through town. And then all of a sudden, this old lady comes crossing out the streets and he slams on the brakes and Robin flies forward. <laughs> It's the windshield. And then he does that thing that, like, I just always remember, like, being a kid and parents do, like, when, like, there's, like, some come up, they're like, oh, let's put my arm across you now. We'll just drive like this. It's going to be okay. When we get back, we'll have Alfred put new seatbelts in. <laughs> well, that whole part is because, like, what he says, like, it's his first rule is, and then they just, like, zooms in on his face. He has the most intense look. He's kind of shaking. He's just like, life doesn't give you seatbelts. And he, like, just takes a ramp. <laughs> And like I like how he gets he gets Robin not to like just be a good father figure. He says like I can't fit in through this thing, so I need a kid. You, you're coming with me. You know, <laughs> like, you take orders, well. <laughs> you know gymnastics. Yeah. And I like it for it just sends him like the most dangerous mission to get like the um, the fucking Fortress of Solitude, the Phantom. Yeah, one well, to the Fortress of Solitude, to get the, but uh, the, get... the Phantom Zone, the Phantom Zone ray gun yeah. thing. 
and you know he puts him through all this like danger just to get him there but there, there's just so much good stuff in that movie it's just I feel like it go on for so long about it and probably come back and converse. It'll be like a Dark Knight Rises, but like in a good way. You'll just keep coming back to it all the time. Like, remember Lego Batman movie when they did this and that? Like, it's just going to keep coming around. So Mm -hmm. I can't wait. You know, hopefully this movie's going to do super well and they'll make another one and we'll just go from there and have all kinds of Batman stuff. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Which is all I want. Now, did you see the other really badass movie? I didn't get a chance to see John Wick 2. I wanted to. Oh my God. John Wick 2 was one of those ones like you always kind of go in life. You're like, can they top the first one? And I will say this day and age, that's actually a little bit more common than maybe back in the day. But this John Wick 2 one was one of those ones where I didn't know if it was going to go like, okay, is this going to be really awesome or is this going to kind of turn out to be like Taken where it just kind of goes on and you realize it's like, oh, okay, Taken 1 is really cool, but do we really need a Taken 2? And I didn't even go see Taken 3. I felt like I was like, oh, been there, we done that. We saw Taken 2. We walked up like, it was fun, but it wasn't like, you know. Yeah, it's not that Taken 2 is bad. I bet you Taken 3 is probably that one could be better i don't know i didn't see it but i just didn't feel like it was kind of like eh you know what's the need it didn't feel like something that needed tons of sequels which is kind of a sag it's like it's liam neeson killing people that should be all i need in life but sometimes that's not enough i guess just call they don't gotta call liam you don't gotta call it taken three or four just call it liam neeson's tuesday <laughs> yeah since thursday just working with with the gun. Week. yeah exactly i would watch that but I kid you not, you got to go see that John Wick too. This movie, I think it would be the movie like if you need to like educate people on how to make action scenes. Every single one in this movie is like it's like a new fucking brand new lesson. You could make you could write a chapter on each action scene in this movie and how they do it and how they stylize it and how it works to literally define like how you make the most like complicated and badass action scenes without making it's just something about it's so cool. Every single time he does something in the movie. It's not just a regular, like, oh, he's just going to throw some punches, you know, shoot some people and all this stuff. It's like, no, it's like that's super fucking planned out. And sometimes it can be funny. Sometimes they can have cool ways of how it works. Like, there's a part where they're, he's battling this one guy, and they're around a fountain. And they're circling around this fountain, and the water's going up. So that's creating these, like, blockades. So, like, whenever the water will go down, they'll fire straight through. But there's people around and everything like that. I'm like, what? that's fucking, that's right there. That's, like, an ingenious, you know, you could just have a regular shootout. But instead, you throw this in there, like, that's awesome. Or there's another part where they're walking through, like, this kind of airport area. And he's battling the same guy because it's, like, a continual fight. And they got these silencers on their pistols, and they have their guns hidden from, like, when people come by. And then every once in a while, they'll, like, pull it up and shoot a bullet down. Because, you know, Keanu's on, like, the bottom level, and this other guy's on the top. So they're just, like, walking down this, like, area. Everybody else is carrying their luggage and walking by, not noticing anything. And they're just, like, firing off these little, like, silent shots as they keep going. (laughs) So it's kind of like each different action scene is like a different style of action scene it's not repeating itself no it's it's like this it's pretty kind of like, movies of eli, like, kind of like a, every action scene book of eli is different yeah like that but there, there's a lot of action in this movie and it's one of those ones like i guess if somebody wanted to it's got kind of a simple story it's like how we get john wick back well he made this deal a long time ago and this guy pulls this token out and he has to do it so that's how we get john wick back so it's story-wise it's a little bit simple it's not that it's bad but it, you know it gets to the point but like when you see these scenes like, they were literally seen. You could take one action scene and fucking study it with a bunch of people. Like, I mean, you just look at this movie. It's like, oh, my God, there's so many of them. And just like Batman, I'm kind of like sort of like was overwhelmed and kind of forgot. Like, I need to see it again just to remember all the different ones in there. But, man, just like not only like, you know, Keanu Reeves really puts the fucking training in. It's like, you know, got this really realistic shootouts, you know, all his martial arts, all the fights in there. And then just the different things along the way. And then it can even have comedy, too, like at a point. Like this part where they're fighting all the way and then they end up coming into that Continental Hotel and they're like, whoa, 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 you guys can't be fighting in here. Why don't you, you boys clean yourselves up. Go get a drink. Go talk it out now. <laughs> so they go over to the bar and they're having a drink and they just kind of go like, yeah, well, when I kill you, I'll make it quick and easy. Oh, okay. I'll do the same. You know, like they just have this total like understanding about what they're doing. Well, that's what I liked about the first one. I'll, I'll be honest. I only knew the first one, like the concept was... I mean, it is a very simple movie, but there are certain little things they did a good job of hiding, which was they were like, OK, what, what's it about? Well, this dude kills his dog that his dead wife gave him and steals his car. and He's going to go kill them all. That sounds pretty awesome. That sounds like it's enough. But then you find out, oh, wait, there's this whole secret society of top notch assassins. They have their own currency. They have their own laws. They have their own rules. They have their own services that don't take regular currency. They only take the currency 
of these like gold coins. Yeah, that these that only people of the society know of. So it was one of those things where I was watching the movie, just like, oh wow, I'm so glad they didn't advertise that because that's such a cool concept right there. Sorry, it sounded like something exploded in the refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, I heard that too. I, you're looking around, I'm like, well, it did explode. No, scary. <laughs> Are you the only yeah, one like, there? Or is Laura moving jump. shit around? Oh, she did too. It looked like a wine bottle exploded out, like the cork shot out or something. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah you, what are you talking about, John Wick, and all of a sudden, like, gunshots, gunfire yeah. goes off. <laughs> Sound like a silencer. But, um, no, yeah, the, that's the thing about that thing, is there's so much layers to John Wick. Like, it could have been just your regular old revenge movie, and that would have been fine, you know, but it would have been one of those ones you would have thrown on once when that was kind of fun. Maybe, like, sort of like a second-rate Steven Seagal movie. You know, I'm not saying his movies aren't good, but, you know, there's... He does have some of those movies you kind of watch once. You're like, yeah, I probably won't come back to that. Well, it's like half past dead. You see, getting, you see like Jaw Rule getting like trying to take down like some 280 pound guy. He's like, motherfucker, you look like you're 45 pounds. Yeah, exactly. There's just kind of things like that. But no, John Wick was like, oh man, it added all these layers to it. And then the second one, like, I really think that, it, you know, almost like, you know, the first one is really cool. I'm not saying anything like that. But the second one, I think almost might just be just that much better. Mm -hmm. At least action, action scene wise, it's so cool. It's just, and the cool thing too is also the beginning of the movie, because I remember when John Wick 1 ended, I was like, well, what about the car? Or like, that was the other part of the story. Where the hell's the car at? Like, I thought he was going to find it at the very end or something like that. That never came around. The movie opens up. He's inside this area, like, blasting people left and right, like, coming to get his car back from the Russian guy, um, the bad guy, and, or the guy in District 9, and also the bad guy in Elysium. The bad guy from District 9 or the guy from District 9? The guy the guy from District 9 and then the bad guy in Elysium. That's the Russian guy that's got it. Oh, no, wait. That's not him? No, it's the no, it's the guy from Armageddon. That's right. Oh, okay. The guy's like, I've never seen Star Wars. I got that confused for a second in my head. I forget that, that dude's guy. name, but he's like a character actor like in every Michael Bay movie. He's like in... Uh, he's in... Uh, he was like in Bad Boys 2. He was the evil Russian in Bad Boys 2. He was also like... He was even like the redneck guy in like in like the, the the in Last Stand with Arnold. Yeah, Last Stand for Arnold. Well, he's in this one too, and he's just like sitting in his office, and like he kind of like hear all this going on, and he's just kind of sitting there like waiting for it, and then it just shows John Wick, and he's outside killing people left and right, fighting them, shooting them, and everything like that. Then he gets in his car, and he starts driving away, and then of course a couple more cars come by, and in the process they're running into it, so they're like damaging his car up, and then he gets to the point where he just starts using his car like a battering ram on everybody, like fuck, I got my car back, but now I'm just gonna like kill everybody with it. <laughs> to the point where he finally goes and he comes up to the Russian guy at the very end, you know, he's oh, we're even. And he gets back in his car and he just drives it off and it looks like it's just about ready to fall apart in the highway. <laughs> but he got it back. That's what's important. It's the principle of the thing. And then he even has, he has a small cameo of John Leguizamo comes in. He comes to say, to pick up his car and go, oh, I'll fix it looking up. at the whole thing. Yeah, I guess I could fix this, you know, Did, I'll get back to you by 2020 or something like does that. Does he pay him like in the gold coins? I, can, I don't think he pays him. I was gonna say, you're just, you're just, you're just gonna do it by gunpoint. That's all, John Wick style. But no, that movie definitely do not miss that one in theaters. Well, even the thing about the first John Wick is even the action scenes are very well directed. It's just like it may be on paper, it may look as if it's just the most bare bones, stereotypical revenge action movie, but it's just shot really well. The cinematography is awesome. The action scenes were very unique. And then plus, like I said earlier, the whole secret society or uh, or secret, yeah, secret society of like assassins. When I look at John Wick, I'm like, that would make for like such a sweet like video game premise like that. Like, you know, he's almost set up to be a badass video game because, you know, you think about that, like, you know, you had, like if you had a game, and you had missions, and everything, and you went back to like the Continental Hotel and that's where you could like upgrade yourself and you could get different parts and different guns. There were so many things you could do in that process. Quick question. Uh, the whole thing with, because uh, the, they're making a big deal. It's like Neo and Morpheus back again. And without spoiling too much, is Lawrence uh -huh. Fishburne, is it like, there he is for a minute. He has one or two cool little scenes. Or is he actually pretty big? No, he, he's kind of, he's just a cameo. But I think that this is the cool thing I liked about that. Lawrence Fishburne, he's in charge of pretty much the hobo mafia. Really? <laughs> I, you, I thought that was like one of the cool, I'm like, a hobo mafia? I've never heard of that before. That's a badass idea, though. 
where it's just they're all homeless, but they kind of like have this code of like assassinating other people or whatever. Or... Yeah, they're they're all these like homeless people, and they just kind of have this building that you know it's not that great looking. It looks like Loris Fishburne's got a couple nice pieces, like he almost found like somebody threw out a nice chair at one point and a table, and he set it up. <laughs> and they have all these pigeons on top of the place that I don't know what they're sending off on there, but they're up there working. But there's a part where John Wick goes to hide, and he sees this homeless guy, and he's out there like, hey, yeah, give me some money, you know, just sitting there with all his trash. And then he comes by and he whips into. Hold on a second. No. Okay. I can't write on that one. I'm using that piece of paper. And, okay, like Lawrence Fishburne. God, fuck, where would I leave off at? Oh, no. John Wicks, he's pretty much fighting. He goes to hide by this hobo because this, by this point, they had like this seven billion dollar like bounty out on his head, so like every single person who's this assassin, which they're all over the place, is like looking for John Wick. So he has to continuously keep fighting all these guys over and over. And once he finishes one off, he goes around the corner, and then there's another one there waiting for him. And he finally finds his hobo, so he gets down and he gives him like one of the gold coins inside his cup, and the hobo rolls him under his trash. And then just sits there, kind of doing the oh, oh, "Give me some money, oh, I'm a hobo, look at me." And then this guy comes up to look at him, and then he pulls out a gun, shoots them, and then takes John Wick into like the special area of like the hobo mafia camp thing. <laughs> I just thought that was such a cool idea. That's kind of a cool concept, you know, because I know that there is not every, not everywhere there is sort of kind of like like this is gonna sound weird. Probably nothing as elaborate as it is in John Wick, but um, I, I I'm really close to Golden Gate Park, and there is kind of like different groups of homeless people that kind of live there, and they kind of have their own rules of what you do and don't do. And it's nothing as deep or like, I don't, if I threw one of them a gold coin, like, Oh, thanks bro. And probably go blow it on pot. But, um, it's one of those things though. They do have their own little rules and their own little, like kind of like society. So that's kind of cool. They found a weird way to fit that into like a, like a action movie like that. Yeah. And then there's another scene too, where they're in Italy and I could have swore that remember in, um, the spy who loved me when they first show jaws, and they're out in that kind of like dark camp area and there's those statues around and everything like that. Yeah. I think that's the same area that's in John Wick 2 and they got this whole action scene underneath there. And then another person they have that's kind of like the main, I guess you could say, villain kind of tracking down John Wick is they got Ruby Rose who just feels like in one month, I think I've seen three, she's been in three movies in theaters. Who's it's like, Ruby Rose fuck. again? That name sounds very familiar. Well, she's apparently from like Orange is the New Black, which I remember because I was we were watching Triple X, and I think that was the first one that she was in this year because she was in Triple X, Resident Evil, and then she was in this one. And I just remember kind of looking at that lady, I'm like, man, that lady's pretty like good looking, and everything like that, like you know, pretty hot actress. And then Laura leans over next to me, and she's all, "That's the actress from Orange is the New Black." And I don't know anything about Orange is the New Black, but I was like, I know that there's this like really famous transgender person in there, so I started thinking like. Wait a second. Is that a man? Am I watching a man this whole time that I thought was pretty good looking? <laughs> <laughs> Were you? <laughs> no, it turns out that was a lesbian character. So I was like, oh, okay. But I was like, <laughs> is that the man? Because, <laughs> you know, you start thinking about it. You're like, well, maybe that is a man. How, how do and I know? And just being what progressive. You? No, I'll say this. Every so often, I'll like, and this is going to sound really, really fucking shitty. But, like, every so often, you'll see, like, a transgender person. And yet, at first glance, you can't really tell at first. Like, Oh no, she looks. She looks like she looks like she was totally born a woman. But then you'll meet one. But then you'll meet like someone and just it, it's like the voice more than anything. It's the voice that's kind of the big cue in to me. There would be some where it looks like not trying to be a dick. There's some transgender people. It looks like they just threw on a wig, and then there are others where it actually where they actually do look like a woman. The only thing that throws me off is the voice. Yeah, Maybe so the so size people that haven't committed all the way yet. The people that are just kind of like, I was just dipping my toes in it. Yeah. Or <laughs> like, you know, and that sounds, I'm not trying to make an overgeneralization just in my own personal experience from meeting them. That's kind of what I've noticed. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, it's, it's an observation. There's nothing wrong with that. That's all it is. I know. I know. But it's just one of those things where just like, I don't want to get a bunch of hate mail. Like, he hates transgender. He's saying we're all the same. Not saying they're all saying, not saying they're going to say that. But... I say there's two categories. Damn it. There's the <laughs> ones that look legitimate and the ones that look like they're just dipping their toes in the water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking sticking by it. No, no. You know what I mean. But no, she's like the main villain, I guess you could say, in this one. There's there's other people too. I, well, I, maybe not the main villain. The main henchman. I guess you can say, and she doesn't, she speaks all in like sign language and everything like that. She's in the trailer there at the very end, mm -hmm. where she says, I'll be seeing you, John Wick. Okay. 
But um, yeah, just I just wondering, like, holy crap, that's like three movies in one month. That's pretty fucking impressive. And it's not like she's kind of like a you know not the main character in any of these movies, but still a pretty good sized character. And you know, John Wick's probably the biggest one, but Triple X, she was one of the main characters in that. And then Resident Evil, she was in it, but she ended up like I think dying about halfway into it. Hmm. Well, you know, I mean. I just kind of looked her up a second ago, and yeah, she looks like she's she looks like she she's kind of made for action movies and that kind of stuff. Yeah, so far it's like yeah, these movies are like yeah, this character's really cool. I mean, hopefully soon she'll be able to star in her own movie, like an action one. I can't see why not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know there needs to be kind of like a new female action hero, anyways, because we don't have really too many of them. They're trying to build up Scarlett Johansson for that. Yeah, but she's. I you mean, like girl, I guess you could sort girl. of. See- <laughs> I know. I will say, though, I, like every single time I see that fucking um, Ghost in the Shell trailer, I go, you know what? That's one of the few times where she doesn't look too weird for that role. Strangely enough, I thought I was going to, like, on paper, I thought it was, there was nothing I was going to like about that. And then you see that trailer, like, huh? It really doesn't look bad at all. Well, Boy, here, I, I, here's the thing about Ghost in the, Sh- the Ghost in the Shell movie coming out. It's like, I really think they should have got someone Asian. I really think they should have got someone Asian. Or just say, you know what, it's America in the future. If you're going to, because I just hate the whole thing. It's like the Matt Damon thing. I'm not trying to be like a social justice warrior here, but it's like, we've got this movie called The Great Wall. It's about ancient China. They're fighting dragons. That sounds fucking awesome. Who's in it? Matt Damon. Why? Yeah. Well, Donnie Yen busy? What, you know, it's like, yeah. It's like, I, I don't really, I mean, and people could say well, that, that's because people would be like, "Well done again." You see, Donnie Yen is a very good actor, but to mom and pop in Oklahoma, we got, they we can't. Stop, stop they they can't take him on a Oklahoma. cover Ma- unless he's going to be dead punches. soon. Mom and Pa in Oklahoma. They were making movies for Mom and Pa in Oklahoma. Oklahoma, the fucking seventies. They're going to be. <laughs> they got to stop the Mom and Pa in Oklahoma. That's what I kind of hate though. Is they still do that though. Like well, they feel, still go. I feel like that. I mean, don't get me wrong. Cause, I mean. Part of me sort of understands. Maybe throw like a white supporting character in there. Like, oh, I, you know, I, 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 I drifted onto a boat here, and maybe he's not the main character. He's a supporting character. Whatever. Just throw him in there. Whatever. But my thing is, it's like they assume, they say like, well, the only way it's going to sell is if we have like a white guy or a white lady that everyone knows. And I, I, or a black guy, not you know. Mostly somebody who's not, you know, because mostly black and white are the two ones that will sit. It's the, the other ones that get iffy about. The only it. two black people that I really feel like, the only two black actors they really would sell is like, they sell a lot, is like Denzel Washington and Will Smith. And Jamie Foxx. He's got a bunch they, of big ones. Samuel Jackson. Samuel Jackson, yeah. Uh, I don't really think so much Jamie Foxx. I mean, I think the only people that really lead a movie that you could really bank a whole movie on. I mean, I'm not, I'm talking about a big giant budget movie. I'm not talking about like, I'm not talking about just any old like action movie or any old drama. I mean, talking big blockbuster movie. The only ones they really seem to really go for is like Will Smith or Denzel Washington. And I'll be wrong. I know those are like the two big. Washington's like one of my favorite actors. So I'm not really complaining about that. I'm just saying the lack of variety they go with. And it seems like they always, the reason why they always get like some, like, you know, a big white actor or actress is because they're like, well, it's the safe bet. And I understand they want to make their money back, but I feel like it's something they tell themselves. I feel like, I think so. I don't feel like that, you know, I, so many people I know would say, oh, I'd love to see Ghost in the Shell with an Asian star saying is she's Japanese. It would make total fucking sense. But I mean, I'll still, the thing about it, that's why I feel so mixed on the movie, because it's not that I even dislike Scarlett Johansson. I just, everything about the movie looks like Ghost in the Shell. It looks how I assume Ghost in the Shell would look, except there's a white Mm -hmm. chick in place of a Japanese chick, and her name is still Makoto Kusanagi. Yeah, and they'll probably find some ways. She's a quarter Japanese, you know, they'll, they'll, because they, why? Because we dyed her hair black, so you know that. Or it's like, or it's like something like, well, she was Japanese, but then she wanted the white model, you know, for her robot body. Yeah, so it's, I, yeah, to me, it's like one of those ones, like, but I think about it, though, like, because I, I literally look, and I go, Evan, look at all the movies I have and stuff. It's like, very rarely do you ever see an Asian person as a main p- character in an American movie. It's very, they, 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 they can be the supporting role, in, and we're, I'll take this back, unless it's a kung fu movie. That doesn't really count, like, because, yeah, you got a lot of Jet Li ones, and, you know, some Jackie Chan ones, but even Jackie Chan, he seems to always have to have... A major Chris Tucker, Owen Wilson, Johnny Knoxville. He has to have somebody else. With, it's almost like he's not allowed to go without supervision. Yeah, <laughs> like 
Well, Jackie Chan, you know, he can direct, he can write, he can do all this stuff. He's like, yeah, well, he's in America now. He's, a, he's in America, so you got to make sure he's got somebody to supervise him. Get Chris Tucker in here, you know what I mean? <laughs> he'll keep the control. He'll keep, he'll keep him balanced out. We're going power home. You know? If we give him too much power, he's just going to start karate chopping everybody in the studio. We've seen this before. We know it's going to happen. <laughs> we know. We've seen it before. He's broken a lot of stuff. You know, just Whenever you've ever seen this. Well, and, like, I, we have to get Chris Tucker in here to calm him down. And then, like, to go and make the movie. That's the only way it works. You know, I saw that Operation Condor. That's real life. I didn't know if you didn't know that, but uh, based on a true story, and it's a documentary. <laughs> like, he's just a spy in a movie, like 007. Yeah. Them, them Asians, I tell you what, got you confused there with their movie-making skills. <laughs> but, no, it's like, and the same thing, too, it's almost like you kind of think of, like, a Mexican. Like, there's very few where, like, a Mexican actor is the main character. I'd say there's definitely much more... Then there is Asian. I don't know why Asian's been like the one that's been like put to the side for like the longest. Like they've been here for such a long time period and they've been making movies and BNN stuff. But they're they're always they're always like shelved like on the backcourt. Like, you know what? If we need you for like the third string quarterback, maybe you can come out. <laughs> maybe. It feels that way. I mean, don't be me wrong. I mean, that's the thing that has me so mixed on the because when I first heard Ghost in the Shell movie, I assumed low budget, cheap as fuck. You spent all the money on Scarlett Johansson. Then I saw the trailer and I'm like, oh, wow, this actually looks like Ghost in the Shell. And they said something that was made me really happy. They said that um, we're ta- it's, it's, it's its own thing. We're ta- it's not a remake. It's taken key like it's taken a lot of po- popular scenes and just slap uh, snapping them in there. But it could almost be like the third or the fourth season to the show. Like they've already been doing this for a while. We're not going to do the whole thing. Here's your new partner. Bato. Here's also um, uh, Ishikawa. You know, he, like, they're not going to be introducing all these characters. It's like they already know each other. They always they, they already work together. So yeah. Well, too bad. It's like you know, you almost kind of wish they could do something. Get the people that made the Roroni Kenshin movies, because those ones was like, oh my god. I mean, they're full on Japanese. So once again, you can't sell this to mom and pop in Oklahoma. I'll be like, I don't understand. Where's Where's my Matt Damon to make me understand what's going on? Get Matt Damon in a ponytail and a scar and, and like an X shaped scar. On his <laughs> Just face. put a red wig on him and he's good to go. Did you watch like the those Roroni? Roroni Ken- I watched all three of those Roroni. I don't Kenshin have two movies. or three. I have one. I love one. No, oh, get two and three. Like they they are all just as good. You know, not a single one bad. And I think it's kind of meant to be this big, fat, continual Star Wars thing. But, like, those movies there, it's like, dude, those movies are made so well. Like, that's, like, that right there, I think, is the definition of, like, how you should make an anime movie. And now, Rurouni Kenshin is one of those ones, like, I've always known about Rurouni Kenshin. I've seen some of it back in the day. I didn't I didn't watch as much as other people. And now, it came on Cartoon Network, correct? It did. Um, I don't really know how I missed it nearly as much. Like, I remember seeing episodes, but I didn't see it as much as, like, you or Josh did or anybody else i remember being really into it well here's the thing with me and roni kenshin um this is gonna make me sound kind of hipsterish for a minute but i actually watched it before it was on cartoon network because i had a friend there's that friend who introduces you into anime who's kind of the bad influence that guy who shows you ninja scroll for the first time and you're mm-hmm. you know it's like you're 12 and he's like want to see something fucked up you know shows you yeah. he, sh- he shows you ninja scroll or he shows you like black black magic 66 or something and um i think it was was a yeah black magic i think that's what it is that's the one with the ro- the robot going on a killing rampage it's very 80s. oh i remember that one yeah 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 anyway roni kenshin he showed me samurai x and samurai x was they changed the name for american audiences but well, plus samurai x when you think about it, like that is such like the 90s name though like you could possibly have like what is he he's a samurai and they call generation it- x though it takes place in the 1800s with an X on his face. Is that's why it was the X on his face, and the, apparently I found out that came to America first, but it was actually a prequel. So they kind of went back, and it's it's in, to- in totally different tone, totally different style from the anime. The anime was like you know very shown in, very PG thirteen. This one was very like grim, very dark, Art. entirely different animation style. Um, but then they brought the anime, the uh, actual series, over to... And I, maybe the manga's different, because the show was very PG-13, but the manga... Well, it almost reminds me of, like, you know how there's, like, a Rambo cartoon show? <laughs> that is literally how, like, like Roroni Kenshin kind of feels. Because I remember, I, like, because I've seen Samurai X, I actually have that one. Those ones, that's so good. Do you have that one Reflections you... or just a Love and Betrayal? I think I just had the first one, the Love and Betrayal one. Okay. But it is one of those ones, like, you watch, but I've seen the other one, too... 
But you watch those, you're like, this is so good. And then it's like you kind of go watch the, the show. And as a kid, you would never have noticed it. But like when you watch it like as an adult, you're like, oh, what the fuck? Like, this is like totally like the super PG version of it where it's like, I'm not really saying it's bad, but I remember like I, when I tried rewatching it, it was like, oh, this is a little bit too like, kid anime well it you know, did I, do the thing I, with I, archetypes like there's the kid there's the be, there's the main character there's the big strong guy there's girl <laughs> yeah exactly there's girl but and which probably if i've got if, if i would have sat down and actually watched a little bit more episodes i probably would get back into it and go okay that's how it is but for some reason i was thinking I, I, in my head i pictured it more like it was in the same category as like full metal alchemist but i'm like i guess it's not exactly that it's like you know um I watched a little bit of it. I remember liking it even as a kid because there's that my that my aspect like I'll get judged for watching this because I was in middle school when it was happening and that's where you still had to you like anime you got to bottle that shit up because they'll they'll hunt you down if they know you know <laughs> so, they'll smell it on your breath like, like I got one <laughs> it's like you know just like quick he's been he's been drinking from the Japanese pond yeah. he's one of them no but like. Um, Roni Kenshin was one that, like, I watched it for a while because my friend, like, fuck, this is going to date me like a motherfucker. Um, he got the VHSs of it. <laughs> and, like, it would be, like, there is, like, four to six episodes on each VHS. And um, I would just watch it. Every time one came out, I would borrow it from him after, like, after he was done watching it. And that's kind of how I would get get into the show. And I watched it all the way up until, like, probably – second or third season apparently like most animes it did the thing where it diverts away from what the manga was doing and apparently like what you can't write that faster yeah oh, i'm writing androids not fast enough <laughs> get to work boy <laughs> that's how it almost feels like japanese go back in your closet and draw your funny books <laughs> and I, that's something i picture like anime or like manga artists because it just sounds like they're these people that are like left alone for like an entire year and then they just like come out like i brought you a book master yeah, I guess we could publish this shit. I don't even feel like it's so much like that because they almost they they seem to really have like highly value create creativity and like create their own stuff in Japanese culture. That seems to be yeah, they, they, they don't have mom and pop in Okinawa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the equivalent. <laughs> <laughs> They're just a fisherman family. <laughs> They're like, well, we gotta have this samurai or this Roni Kenshin appeal to mom and pop Oklahoma. Name it Samurai X. <laughs> We'll get the uh, baby boomer generation, you know, with this shit. Yeah. No, like, um, the, the, I remember, like, I kind of watched it all the way up through, like, Shishio a little bit into, there's the season where they had, like, I, I doubt this came to, I was like, I doubt this one's coming to um, Toonami. Uh, there's one where there's a group of Christians that lead a revolt against the Japanese government because the Japanese government, and this is this is part of history, and even they have this is sort of what the um, to a certain extent, certain extent, what the uh, newest Martin Scorsese movie is about, about the Japanese mm -hmm. going executing anybody who's not a Buddhist, which I'm sure. Buddha what if that movie turned out it was like all sounds like oh fuck, this is a Rurouni Kenshin movie. He just comes that in, starts like <laughs> taking fuckers out. <laughs> Martin's like, yeah, I always loved this. He's like, I always loved this anime shit. You know, I could never make it before. I was afraid I was going to judge. Like, you know what? I, I was afraid that, that you know, George Lucas was going to come in and peer pressure me and bully me around, Same you know? Steven and Spielberg. then Francis Ford Coppola's like, what, you're not doing fucking mobster shit, you fucking pussy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're doing kung fu movies now, huh? You're going to go hang out with Quentin Tarantino? I was like, yeah, like, maybe I will. <laughs> He likes to you know, know what? I like the Tarantino. No, but like I feel like um, that whole because because like that. So basically, they had like it was this whole thing about the Japanese government versus the the Christian like uh, this Christian like moff uh, <laughs> Christian mafia. I don't know. <laughs> this Pretty much are because you know it's you know the Christians for a thousand years went and bullied everybody else's country around to convert to their thing. So when they finally that's the same thing like in the eighteen hundreds of like the once upon a time in China and all that stuff mm -hmm. of. You know, pretty much fucking Jet Li's character. Um, God damn, I'm like, well, what's, what's his name? That real life guy that they made like over 100 movies on. Like, he's pretty much defending the, the traditional the Chinese. Which the one? The guy from Fearless? That guy? Yeah, I think it's the same guy. Um, God, I can't think of his name. He's got the fucking song that plays every single time. Which I don't think the song actually says his, his name in it, but I always just say the name because I don't know the Chinese lyrics. <laughs> but, um, like, that story, too, where... 
he's defending pretty much the Chinese traditions against the American, like imperialists and British coming in, trying to like force their values onto it. I think that one's more British most of the time, but there is Americans as well. Yeah. And he, um, Goddamn American and British always going after the poor Chinese folks <laughs> and the Japanese. And this, yeah, and so basically it was like Kenshin kind of, Kenshin and his whole crew coming between them, trying, because, you know, they had evil Japanese guys trying to kill all the Christians. They had Christians trying to kill all of them and good guys and bad guys on both sides. And I and that's like the last season I saw. And because that's where I moved from, because this is when I lived in San Jose, then I moved to Sonora after that. So... That's the last of it that I saw. And I doubt that maybe it did, but I highly doubt that season went to Toonami, bringing in a whole episode about religion and countrymen. And apparently, as far as the movies go, as far as I understand, it stops at Shishio because that's apparently I'm not sure how far the mangas went, but I know. Uh, yeah, there is a whole subplot about Inishi coming in and trying to get like revenge on Kenshin for actually killing Tomo back in, I guess, Samurai X Slum Betrayal is what the uh, American version would be. But yeah. Yeah, and it's one of those ones, like, that's actually, I wouldn't mind going out and getting that manga and just seeing what that one's all about. Because lots of times, like, I always kind of go for some shows, like, well, why am I getting the manga? I mean, I saw the entire anime. I mean, is it really, I mean, it'll be, it'll be different. I'm not saying it's not going to be different, but I was like, you're kind of going to know the main plot points unless they really, like, deviated from it. But that one, to me, it's like, well, I didn't really watch the TV show too much. I mean, I caught episodes, but I didn't watch as, I don't know why, for some reason, that show, I didn't watch it, like, a Full Metal Alchemist or an Inuyasha or a Cowboy Bebop or a Dragon Ball Z. I don't know why, because at that time period, we didn't have a whole lot of choices. You think I would have been so grateful to have one more. I think but somehow, some way I only I only really saw like maybe 10 episodes or so. I remember the sh thinking back on the show. The show has really good moments. I don't know if it would hold up to me now because that was at a time where you're you were limited. And when you start watching something like anything, like you should be told. You know what? I talk all this shit on Adventure Time. I never got into Adventure Time, but I better, I guarantee you, if you sat me in a room and forced me to watch ten episodes of it, I'd probably like it by ten episodes. Probably. I'd probably be hooked in and kind of curious where it was going. So mm -hmm. if it was good, that is. So um, I'm assuming so. Probably same thing for Kenshin. After like you know probably ten, fifteen episodes of Kenshin, I'm probably hooked in, seeing where and I like the characters by then. Assuming they did its, it did its job. So I think that by this point, like it wouldn't be maybe we're not held held up as well, but I think there is some nostalgia there. And I think the movies, what they do is because it was way darker than the, the TV show. So either it's going more off the manga, which I never read, which maybe the manga is way darker mm -hmm. or it's just kind of like, you know what? The audience has grown up by this point. We have no problem making it rated R. Well, that's what I like about the movies is because the movies just takes it like, oh, it's, it's full on rated R. It's super serious. You know, it's violent and like these are all big major issues going on. And that's what I like, though. But it still has an anime vibe to it. I think that was what was kind of cool. They weren't trying to pull that out of it, which I think that's always the downfall to trying to make, you know, you, when you make it like you want to still have that little bit of anime-ness in there or else it's just going to feel like it's not going to feel like, a, you know, an anime property. It's going to come across as something else. And I think those Roroni Kenshin movies, like those right there, I consider that's like, the definition of like the best live action adaptations I have seen so far on anything anime manga, well, you know, because the other ones are pretty good too. Is I didn't get to see them all, but was the Death Note ones were good. The only downfall is they like they made Ryuk. They just made him like a CG character, so he just like stood out like a sore thumb because his CG wasn't that great. William Defoe's Which, voice him in the American version. Does he? William Defoe. I, well, I watched it in Japanese, so I didn't know. No, no, the, they're coming out with an American version made by the same guy. It's going to be a Netflix series, but it's made by the same guy who did Your Next and The Guest. Yeah, oh, that's kind of cool. It'd be cool if they just had Willem Dafoe just like literally like hung up on strings, like no fucking real yeah. makeup or anything. <laughs> he, like just have the costume on and like, oh my God, that, that would just be Just spray awesome. paint his face white and just have William Dafoe just in casual clothing. That would be, yeah. Yeah, like, like, like it like just hung up on strings, like just like floating. You know what I mean? Don't give him CG or whatever they might do. Like, no, no, no. Literally just have him in there like a fucking full on prop because... That, to me, like, in the Japanese one, I think that was the only thing that was missing. It's like, dude, they should have just got a guy in a costume. Like, how hard would that fucking be? It's not like Ryuk's, like, doing too much. He's just, like, in the corner. You could tie him up to the back corner of the guy's bedroom and just have him hang there. Yo, what's up? I'm trying to remember who's playing. Someone's playing light. Uh, it's not the, uh, God, who's playing light? It, it's His name's Light Turner, so they're making it American. Um, yeah. I would assume so, because once again, mom, pop in Oklahoma is not going to understand well, here, Japanese problems. Bear with me on this double standard right here. For me, it's one of those things. 
it's what it's like okay you're just making the american version so i get it if you went if you decide to make a full-on japanese version of it that followed more closely to the anime or the manga or whatever that'd be cool but i know they're not going to do that so it's like one of those things if you're willing to make an american version that follows it closely just don't have it be it's set in japan but we got a white foreign exchange student just like no it's it's japanese make them japanese so doing the american version just with an american cast i get that it's the whole well, we're going to Japan, yet they're focusing on a white guy. That's where it really annoys me. Yeah, and that's different, because I understand. That's sort of like, it's literally, it sounds like they're just doing Death Note, but American it's style. Like, and, it's, and it's like Departed, because like the Departed is technically, that's the Boston version of a Chinese crime story. Mm-hmm. And that's the same thing you could even say with like taking other movies to like Old Boy, and you know it's like well they're doing just the American version of that, or and I I, know, I feel like as long as you just say that it's when you kind of do like the half half like well we don't want to step on anybody's toes, so we're gonna still keep it Japanese, but we don't want Japanese people in the as the main characters because that scares away mom and pop in Oklahoma and New Jersey, so we gotta be like it's like okay just 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 go, go balls out, you know what I mean? Like I, I think it's one of ones like nobody's gonna care. Like I mean, how many people? There's always gonna be that guy who's like. Oh, they put an Indian guy on the cover of this movie? Well, I ain't fucking seeing it then. Yeah. But realistically, like, is that guy, like, is He's that going to make or market? break that movie for you? Like, you know what I mean? It's not like somebody's going to walk in and be like, oh, they put a Jappy on the cover of the ghost in the shell. Well, why the fuck? Well, that guy's not going to see the movie probably in the first place no matter what. <laughs> no matter who you put on the cover. Like, you're not losing really anybody. Yeah. I don't, and I don't think most people really care. You know what I mean? Like... As long as the only time that people like are generally gonna care is like, do I have to read the movie? That's the that's the only thing that might make and break it for like people. But I do not think anybody legitimately cares unless they're just like born born racist, well, you know. Well, I, I, there's another example, like another a ne- another negative example of this. Now I didn't see either of the movies, but as far as I understand, like it, it's that Japanese horror stuff which doesn't really reach out to me. But there is like The Grudge. The Grudge was an American remake of a pre-existing Japanese movie. As far as I know, it was a the, the the American grudge took place in Japan. It was just an American couple living in Japan, and it's like, why the fuck are if you're gonna do an American remake, might as well make it take place in America and have it be an American ghost haunting them. You know that that to me, it's just one of those things. Like, what, yeah. let's just watch the Japanese version and just put on the Amer. If you don't like reading, just put on the fucking like voiceover shit. Yeah, that that to me, it's that's always such a goofy one because because I want people like I don't mind I, I can read all day long movie because I here. love like I because I, I just love you know what I mean like you know like a lot of times with animes unless the anime if the anime dubs good like I'll I'll choose the dub over that but like mm-hmm. I don't care like I watch so many like Chinese and Japanese and other foreign type movies all the time that's like I can sit there and read nine hours of a movie it does not bother me you know what I mean I just got so used to it I can do that in a video game fuck I played Final Fantasy fifteen the entire way through in Japanese. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, or if it's like something like they put on like a uh, um, a uh, shit. What was the example I was gonna make here? They if like if they had like Evangelion or something, and they're just like, you know what? It's gonna be full on Japanese, full on Japanese remake. I'm like, okay, cool. If they were gonna do that and like have it be in Japanese, fine, I'd watch it. It's just like that whole thing of what they do is like it's gonna take place in Japan, but we're getting white people. That, that's just where it annoys me. Yeah, just like you what's know, like, the fucking point in the first place then? Yeah, it's just, I just I think that to me is just like that like you're trying to be too safe, and then almost being like too like, almost like PC towards like American people like you're afraid that they're gonna judge you because you have put like some other. It's just such a weird concept. It's like if anything too, it's like well then just get like an actor that like you trust or like the thing too is like here's let's use the Great Wall for an example. What that movie should be is it should be like maybe Chinese characters first and foremost, and Matt Damon's like more like the bonus. He's like the Anne character. You know what I mean? Maybe it's a like, side character. This, 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 and Matt Damon. Like that's fine. You know what I mean? Use him as like sort of a bonus selling point, but he's not maybe the main character. It's kind of like Prince of Persia. Poster. Like all three, of the like all the main sellers of Prince of Persia don't even look Persian. They look like white people. Well, spray just, on they get like literally like the whitest actors can. And I will say that Jake Gyllenhaal, like he fucking like a hundred percent like acts his way into being that character i will say like yeah i was like oh whoa it's like you will believe that a jake gyllenhaal can be persian but <laughs> at the same time when, when i know that jake gyllenhaal is not persian he's just he's just that good of an actor that he could like fool people but it is still sort of like that to me comes across as like that seems just really racist yeah <laughs> they just what? literally spray tandem that's all they did so it's like you know what i mean that's a, uh, that's equivalent of like okay 
we, we could do it the reverse way where it's like, we're going to have, you know, an Abraham Lincoln movie, but we're going to get, you know, Iraq's number one actor to come by and play. We're going like, to white face him. <laughs> you know how much that would piss people off in America? Like if you got like, I'm using a country that people like would be threatened by like, okay, let's say if you got super like Iraqi, super like Saudi Arabian actor and he played Abraham Lincoln in a full on American movie. That would seem like wrong, correct? You know what I mean? Like people would get all weird about that, but it's like that's the exact same thing you're doing. You're not doing anything different. You're just doing that with other people's characters, but then putting in just a super white guy into there, or a super, you know, white girl or what have you. It's it's just a weird concept. I don't know. It is, yeah. So it's one of those things that maybe hopefully they'll get past that. I don't know. Hopefully they will and we can just have I mean like well, it's that great wall movie. I'll probably, I'll probably go see it anyway because I don't I don't give a fuck. It looks cool, it's got Matt Damon. <laughs> It doesn't look that cool, and we all be honest. It doesn't look that good to me. Eh, I, I guess I just like things. Like I'm just one of the ones. That I'm so open nowadays. You're just like, so positive. You're just like let's so give it positive. a shot. I'm like it's Matt Damon shooting monsters. What more do I need in life? You know what I mean? I, I'm not asking for much. Mm-hmm. You know, you. So. it just doesn't jump out at me. There's a time when like a big like I don't know. Maybe it's because well, I we're, I know we're pushing two hours, so I'll make this real quick. Yeah, but we're it's probably like, getting close. That's what always happens whenever like you get like a mid cut in between, then you kind of forget like what the time has been. I'll make this real quick, but it's like one of those things where it's like you have um, it's like there's a time where a major like action adventure blockbuster was such a big deal, but now special effects are so good and you can pump them out so easily. Now like a big giant adventure blockbuster doesn't seem like that big of a deal anymore. Well, that's definitely true. I mean, like, because, you know, CG is one of those things like I'm not the biggest fan of CG stuff. It's like I I accept it, but I I would prefer a live action movie way more than a cartoon Mm -hmm. as far as that goes. But at the same time, I'm like, eh, I'll go see it. What the hey? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No, yeah. Can't imagine being bad. You know what I mean? That takes a lot for a movie to be pretty bad, you know? We'll we'll see what happens, I guess. You have to let me know about that. By then, hopefully, I'll see John Wick. Speaking of which, you're going to see that Jamie Foxx action movie that's come out that you say he's not an A list actor? Look, I'll see. I'm not (laughs) saying that he can't. I'm I'm not saying that Jamie Foxx can't sell a movie. I'm saying how often do you see, like, just that? Like, how many people do you see that aren't Will Smith or Denzel Washington? in like leading roles when it comes to people of color. That's all I'm saying. Like major, yeah. like I'm talking about your big, big, like, you know, tent pole movies. Exactly. So no, by no, this no. point, Denzel's probably been doing more like dramatic stuff lately, more than genre lately. Well, he does like, it seems like he does like half, half. He does action movies, like super balls to the wall action movies. Magnificent like, you know. seven. Never mind. I'm totally. Yeah. Magnificent seven and the equalizer. And, yeah. and then he does like his drama movies too. Like fences, just like kind of, it's like a, he almost like flip flops. He's like, okay, you get the killing in, then you get the emotion in. Get the killing, and then you get the crying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Except for Denzel, last time he doesn't cry, he, but he makes other people cry. In he will, like he'll just, you know, like no, be wrong. So like, I, Will Smith's really good, and Denzel Washington's one of my favorite actors. But it just seems like those are like the only two like black dudes they get for like major, major motion pictures. Where it's like, you know, you can still have a major, you should have like a big like you know Warner Brothers or Universal movie with someone of like a different ethnicity, but it's just like, it seems like we got to get a white guy. It's always that, you know? Well, yeah, it's almost like that. It's the old fashioned fast and the furious kind of style. That's like, that's what Paul Walker pretty much was. You know what I mean? You really have this Mexican movie. It's just like slap Paul Walker in there, which I will say in the long run, you're like, well, that's my relatable. That's my gateway character. Well, now that now to make up for Paul Walker, it's like, okay, now Paul Walker, Jason Statham, yeah, Jason Statham, Charlize Theron and Kurt Russell. So we got to make up for the whiteness. <laughs> We, we got different. We got different levels of gateway characters no, depending on what them, age range you're. None of them are like the main character that Paul Walker was. The three of them combined, you know, that's to be create it, you know. <laughs> but that's kind of how it was because, like, when you first watched Fast and the Furious, that's what it was. It sh- it almost is like should be a full on Mexican movie, but, <laughs> but then you got have Paul Walker in there just to. Wait, I'm not complaining. That's that's Fast and the Furious, but you could tell that he's like literally your gateway character. Mm. But yeah, movies. They're always fun. Batman, full of laughs. John Wick, fucking education. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. Brian Dunnigan. Check out oldmanorange.com. Till then, we'll see you some other time. Later, folks. Thanks for listening to the Old Man Orange Podcast. Check out our website at oldmanorange.com for even more podcasts, cartoons, videos, music, and more. Send us an email at oldmanorangepodcast at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review us on iTunes, Podomatic, or any of the other fine sites we might be located on. And if you want to help out even more, click on the Amazon or GameStop links on our webpage before you make any purchases there. 
won't cost you a penny, but it sends us a little something our way. Thanks for listening, and tune in next week to Old Man Orange. <laughs>